Ethan, do you want to hit this off and then I can just make sure, facilitate the rest and take notes? Yeah, that sounds good. So we have kind of this, this last part in two sections, visioning and then long-term planning. For visioning, what we want to do is start off by going into our, our individual kind of visions and expectations and hopes. Um, and then after we kind of spell that out in, in brief, uh, we'll want to coalesce that into a group vision. And then for the second part in long-term planning, we want to talk about the technical aspects of um, how we get there, who we involve. Um, so for this part, what we'll want to do is everyone take up to three minutes to just say what your vision is for, for what we're all doing here. Um, and that's within both these, this next part of the year while we're working with our limited resources and beyond. Yeah, and I'm going to keep a timer, so please take just three minutes individually. So don't consider this your like, chance to say whatever you want about what you think the CSD is. And then we'll have a group discussion, but just go for it. Like, why did you run? Why did you want to <coughs> be on this? What you think the potentials of this are? What you think this w should be? Anything like that. And specific, general, long-term, short-term, anything like that. So yeah. I'm going to start these timers. And, yeah. and we'll start with George and get cool. this way. <laughs> All right. Let's start over there. All right. I'll, I'll start. start. I'll start. All right, good. Okay. So I guess my vision getting on the board was to you know assist the community to deliver these new nine sets of potential services over a long period of time and then expanding those services probably beyond the nine to do some of those things that where the, the county does them but doesn't have a presence in the community long term. I mean, uh, not, they have a long-term <coughs> presence. It's just an ongoing being out in the community and better understanding what those services could be. But I think the first goal is, how do we implement the nine or not implement the nine? Hmm. And, and saying, how long would it take to do that? And the last thing it is, it all requires money and funding and getting the tax passed. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Hmm. Great. So, wow, one minute. Good work. So who's next? I'll go. All right. Um, the nine uh, stated powers uh, provide a reason to stay in Isla Vista, to live in Isla Vista, not just to pass through in a transient sense. Um, it, uh, the, the nine stated powers provide an environment where um, uh, uh, this could become the community that it really could become, and it has not yet. We've seen hints of it, but we've never really seen it coalesce <coughs> in, in a sustainable kind of a way. Reason being, uh, we are a community without a center. We've been a community without a hub. We've been a community without anything that drew it together, that connected uh, the many parts of it. Um, We've also been a community without a voice, and uh, we have earned that voice to sit here at this table. And uh, it's, it's time for us to deliver on those nine promises, and they are promises. They're not just positions. They are promises to this community that this will be a safer, better place to live, a place where you might decide to stay, might even decide to raise a family there. And, uh, and pass on a legacy from this place. And um, uh, I, I, I just am very excited to be a part of that. Great. And I, I think those powers really will grow. <coughs> Great. Excellent. All right. Who's next? That was a minute and a half. Uh, I can go next. Okay. So um, I think that, um, you know, as the youngest person on the board and I'm still a student in my own right, I definitely come at this from the perspective of um, only learning, I think, a lot of sort of what the functions and day-to-day -day powers that local government has a responsibility um, are um, over our, um, you know, I learned all that fairly recently, and I see the way in which these processes that what we're doing is very um, mysterious, I think, to a lot of students mm -hmm. and to um, a lot of folks who live in this community yeah. um, that don't like something that's going on or have this idea <laughs> for something that can be done that in a lot of cases uh, are really cool. And you know, maybe not all of those ideas are gonna succeed or maybe not all of them um, are gonna work out perfectly. Maybe some of them are even not well conceived, but 
in the current situation that we, we as a community have been in for a long time, we haven't had the ability to even try it, to even try our own okay. sort of uh, pathway. Yeah. And so um, for me, with everything that I see us striving towards is building the authority, the power, and the ability to do these things and to try these new things. Um, and so uh, when that comes to service delivery, um, that comes to uh, <coughs> both us uh, delivering services in a way, sort of, if you're talking about public safety, you know, it, it's um, developing community policing and trying um, to police people in a way where it's their you know, friends and their neighbors who are doing the policing. But then externally, when it comes to, it also comes to focusing services that other service providers deliver. So um, if um, UCPD or the Isle of the Foot Patrol is um, doing something that is making it harder for them to, uh, you know, as for have a safe community, then we need to be able to have some leverage to be able to focus that better. Um, so that those are really the two prongs that I come at it with um, when it comes to like what we're doing. Both it's setting the example and like setting the model, and also affecting that change on the outside. Great, awesome. Uh, oh, that was two minutes. All right, who's next? I'll go next. Okay, one second. Let me reset the clock. Okay, there, there you go. go. <laughs> I won't go for three. <laughs> but uh, I really appreciate everything <coughs> that folks have had to say so far. And I think that my my top priority, which is, I think, shared by everyone, is to improve the quality of life here and to take that to bring more stability to our community, <laughs> to continue to have Isla Vista as a premier place to go to school and to live while you're in school, but to also broaden that, to have it a place where you can raise a family, a place where you can uh, live and be a professional and, uh, and not have to go out of your way to explain to people why it's desirable to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, and to do that, what I, I really think that boils down to is my top priority of making Isla Vista safer, um, making Isla Vista a place with a more fair rental system, so mm -hmm. a place where our primarily renter population can be treated with more dignity and respect and uh, be more comfortable and ha live in better circumstances, a place where our citizenry is working on being more proactive rather than reactive, not just solving what's gone wrong, but planning for the future yeah. um, for, for the best success, and then also empowering residents to address the challenges of the day. I think that this really is the vehicle for that, where residents of Isla Vista with our friends can <coughs> uh, come and make real change. And I think that by us ensuring the long-term success, that is really our, our greatest, um, the greatest contribution we can make to this community, empowering not just us to make the changes that we're facing today, but making sure that the future generations of Isla Vista have this vehicle for change as well. Excuse me. Sorry. So, okay, um, that was great. And that was two minutes. Less than wow, two minutes. I really wow, we're killing it. We want to get out of here on a good time schedule. So, who's next? <laughs> Jay, Natalie, and George are left. So, one of you. So, um, when I look at Isla Vista, I see a very unique community. I see a very young community. Uh, it's something that I, th I think gives us a lot of opportunity in order to try new things and I think that it's a really interesting um, experiment in, partici in participatory government which actually is uh, something that I had heard from Father John at some point mm -hmm. we're very similar to yeah. that um, I, I, I've cared a lot about transparency and about making certain that people feel comfortable um, being able to participate in meetings yeah. this is something that is, it had bothered me at the county level um, and uh, at some of the, some of the <coughs> other districts and so I, I one of one of my big visions and goals is to make certain that at, at all stages we're constantly making certain that the public understands what we're doing, that the public feels um, like that the, the, they can come to our meetings and they can, yeah. they can participate and understand the meetings as well, which I think is also a very important thing. Because sometimes I see that governments will end up in the situation where it's like, well, people come to the meeting, but they don't really understand the process. I really like the, the word Spencer used, uh, leverage, which is one that I had actually already written down as well. Um, so that's like a separate mm -hmm. thought process, which is that I think a lot of times we end up in a situation where the county has been making decisions for us. Or, yeah. um, and I, I think that it's important for us to be able to um, have this, this entity of our own in order to be able to, to have a better, stronger seat at that, at that table in order to be able to um, uh, push back in various ways or potentially even get something like a municipal advisory council, um, which is one of our powers in order to be able to uh, truly coordinate um, with the um, 
uh, with the county. Um, but so, as, 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 and as far as the, the powers that we have, we have these eight initial powers, but I know some of them were, were controversial during the setup, and I, and I think that there were some opportunities that were left on the table. And so I'm, I'm always trying to see like what are things that we would actually do now that we are the board. Because we had always said during the AB3 meetings that well, we can put stuff together right now, we can talk about it all, but it's the board that will end up making the decisions when the board comes into power. So It would be interesting to hear those others that kind of got left off. Yeah. 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 Cool. And Natalie or George? How long was it? Do you know? Two minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought Two you were going to have to cut me off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, you going? Um, okay. Yes. I'll start Sorry, you. I'm like functioning at like half my normal capacity right now. Which has uh, been like high for a normal like person. Very, <laughs> very high functioning. <laughs> uh, I'll restart you. Uh, <laughs> uh, the reason why I got involved uh, with the CSD. Um, I think that generally people see, I'm very, very much committed to service within our community and just like a much broader sense of like giving back or being involved and making sure that things are fair and just for everyone. And I think that a lot of people see the only facet to do that is through like a nonprofit. And I think that that's not very untrue. And I think one of the biggest ways to do that is actually through local government. Um, because that does have an impact in your life. And instead of focusing on one facet or one group of people, you really do have an ability to make change um, across a larger scale. Um, so that's why I think that this was a really good fit for me and I still feel very passionately about that decision. So um, with that being said, I was not as involved in the AB3 process, which kind of, I don't know if it set me back or kind of gave me a fresh slate in being able to look at things from a different perspective without having that, um, you know, like all the chirping of everything that happened before. So I think it's actually been a positive impact for me in moving forward um, and some things I really feel passionately about are I, the tenant mediation program. I really do think that that's awesome. I actually really like the graffiti abatement power. That's like something I really love because I think it is such an opportunity to bring in community artwork. Um, and I think just on a larger scale, uh, I think that a lot of people forget the historical context in which this was created and how this has been attempted to achieve for like over 50 years, which is so crazy to me. Um, and I think that just bringing more people into that process and allowing them to have a voice in their own community. And I think that a lot of times also, everybody's always like, we have a transient community, we need to stop that, or we need to do this. And it's like, people are gonna come and people are gonna go like any other community. And instead of trying to stop that transient aspect, I'd rather just make whatever time everyone has here positive. I don't want them to worry, I want them to be safe. So if you come you and stay, great. If you come and you leave, great. I just want the whole time to be good for everybody. That's what I'm doing here. So the, I don't mind that you're sick if you want to sit at the table and I can I'm move just over. Like, I I'm I'm also like, like person, my temperature right? is like going. Okay. I've been opening and shutting the door like every couple minutes. So it's too bad that you're Sorry isolated off that. in the corner. No, and I like I'm kind of enjoying my yeah. smile yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> right. Last one. Okay, George. so. Uh, Jonathan, let me use my first 20 seconds to say, look, if you want to have secret meetings, just agendize retreat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and first of all, I want to say this is this has been a great experience. This has really been really helpful for me. And as, as, yeah. as cranky yeah. as I've been, uh, I think this is really good for, for us as a group to talk about these things. Let me follow something that Natalie said, which is the thing that I've been most uh, struck by is grappling with the transiency issue because in my mind as we try to compare what we're doing to any other district or any other self-government or anywhere else we keep running up against the transiency issue so up in the up in the clouds we need to follow up and adopt this kind of thing where we know we have it we're not going to change it how do we turn it into a power and it seems to me it's this board and there's no easy answer to it but somehow we have to address that quality of life uh, we need to build community that's ultimately what we need to do and the feeling of, of belonging and then somehow take advantage of our proximity to UCSD to enhance the community the, the obviously the university has ignored Isla Vista for a long long time we need to change that I think we can enhance we can make with it world-class university, this should be a world-class community. Okay. I think we can do that. Yeah. I think we can align those two things. But thanks again for organizing this. Ross, thank you for driving up here on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. cool. It's been really good. <laughs>
Thanks for acknowledging that too, George. That you guys yeah. completely neglected us forever. <laughs> 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 hey, that's that's the human process. You gotta you gotta admit. Uh, us, <laughs> us guys, all of us alumni. Actually, are we, are we currently essentially forcing Ross to be here? Like, I don't know if we are we talking about no. more legal issues or like, are, are you just? Yeah, just <laughs> go home now. You yeah, just, Ross is. You just about pretty much hit the just deepest traffic. Of deepest darkness. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll let you go now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Ross, service hit that road. <laughs> if you do want to go, it's up to you at okay. this point. But all right, yeah. thank you for being here. Of course. Oh, that didn't take long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except you might want to reroute where we are. George, we're going to talk about the intern program now. Thanks for everything, Ross. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very excellent. Thank you. I'll have the PowerPoint I referred to. I'll send that to you so you can have a copy of that. Uh, Jonathan, I'll see you soon. When do we think we do the second half of the sexual harassment? Probably in one of the meetings in December, since okay, it's great. Cool. not great. substantively. Wait, that was the first ahead. half? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's part one. Two what? hours. It's two, two hours long. Okay. You're halfway there. Yeah, You're halfway there. That's right. how you broke up. Thanks for that. Thank you, Ross. I'm Violet Brown. All right, so. Bill Brown. I'll turn the cameras off. Let's have a seat at the end now, right? <laughs> so listen about petty cash. Why don't you go ahead and get some petty cash? It's all cash? good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Let's go do it. <laughs> um, okay, so now that we've had everything, I think there have been some like pretty prevailing themes that have come up. We want people to be more involved. I think that's mm -hmm. something everyone said is getting people to be yeah. involved in a way that's different than other local governments. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, Service delivery, like making sure that quality of life is improved through our services. Yeah. Let's open it up to discussion. What, what do you all want to say as a general thing so that we can look at this recording later and then come up with a statement that embodies what we just talked about? I, I think there's a big overreaching issue on some of our powers that it's up to us as a community services district to better bring the county and its delivery of services and UCSB's impact on those services together for solutions. For, for instance, the Planning Commission. If we were willing to step up and pay for a Planning Commission, the county would probably go for it and appoint a Planning Commission. But the big thing for a Planning Commission to do would take the vision of the county and the vision of the university, which right now are probably quite different oh, yeah. and bring those together yeah. to solve that that how are we going to develop this community and you know are we going to put change Del Playa to residential housing get people to move back in here and are we going to do that kind of stuff because the master plan says no we're not going to open those streets and we need to bridge that gap and the same thing with the MAC if the MAC's going to be formed, everybody's kind of holding off on the MAC and saying, well, the, there is a MAC today, let's not change the MAC. But really, you want a municipal advisory council, if we're going to pay for it, that's going to better bring the community together about how are we going to deliver future services of government, which are pretty complex today. So I, I think that's one of the things that, there's probably a lot of that that goes on today with public safety and stuff, but... I don't know if it has the, all the synergy we need to do uh, to, to, to the same thing with UC police and the sheriff. Do we really have the synergy and have we really brought those together and is the sheriff embracing our new CSO program and become the eyes and ears like we talked about expanding it, have people walking around and look to be acceptable to escort people? I don't know if the sheriff's there. No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. In, in a word. Yeah. But it's no. an opportunity yeah. to work on. Yeah. 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 At the same time, I think a big thing that we should address, just because I do, like, I think a big part of, I spend a lot of time with everybody in Isla Vista who really doesn't really care about anything until something goes wrong, like most of my friends. <laughs> uh, and people still don't identify the CSD as the governing I don't think that people see that as the number one governing thing because there's so many things to start with. IV, blank, 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 blank. Nobody knows that this is the one that is the one. You know what I'm saying? And I understand all of those boards serve their purpose, but when it comes to communicating with the county and everything else, I don't think that it has been identified by the community exactly because we are still kind of new. Like, where is the line where you go to 
the parks? Where's the line where you come here? When should I go to the community network meeting? And I think that we should, I don't know what the solution is, but I thought I'd just point it out because there's so many IV blah blah blahs that I have absolutely, nobody knows where to go. So I think that we should definitely yeah. make that clear of what our purpose is. Well, so so do you, you feel like we are the main one? Like, I is would that, hope that because when it comes to, like we talked a lot about like the reason why we created the CSD and I, I hope that we would be the representative body where we can filter all of those IV things into one because it's right now it's too spread out. There's too many cooks in the kitchen for anything to actually get done. Because I think that a lot of time, by the time that one board has an idea over here, this board's already been working on it. Nobody's communicating all the way in the same way with the county and this and that and the other thing. So I was just hoping that there's some way to filter it more. But I, but I think we're doing the right thing. We're starting small. Mm -hmm. And if we really start saw and be successful with the two programs we have today, which is this building to expand over to that building, Maybe another public safety program. I don't know where you came up with the last idea, but it's it's a great idea it's a winner. for yeah. the long-term success. What's the other one that we do that the university would be willing to sponsor? What are we going to do with the rest of the university's money, you know, for the remainder of this year and next year that we can kick stuff off with? And, and, and not overreach ourselves that we somehow... I like to take risk and try it, and if we're unsuccessful, we... Do it again. We can't be afraid of that. But how do we decide what to do next, and then keep being yeah. successful? Because I think you guys have something to brag about. I think the CSO program and running this community yeah. center, the condition of this building, the condition of the room, yeah. it's 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 mm -hmm. much better than f five years ago when I was out here. Mm -hmm. So, well, if we can slop into long term planning. Um, well, we have a structured way for doing that. Do you want to take a quick break and then jump right into it? We got to also order the food for the. Oh, dinner. there's food coming. Yeah, we're gonna order pizza. Oh, burrito. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you guys don't want food, we can just finish oh up. Don't food. allocate any food. I didn't for me. say that. I'm still co you don't starving want food? college student. No, I just, I just, I just, I ate a giant burrito. Oh, you and did. Like Natalie, that's that's okay. something. So. Oh, did, I ate half of it. Five of you want food? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good to wait till I go home. Okay. Me too. Me too. Okay. Okay. Right. So the old guys don't need anything. Great. <laughs> well then, do we want to take a quick 10 minute break and finish off the retreat? Or do you want to just jump into long term planning? Does anyone, I mean, we're, we're I'm kind of excited yeah. in a conversation. Yeah, right? 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 We, have, we have to get our vision first, though, right? Like, yeah, well, I don't think we have to like write a consolidated okay. vision yet. Because okay. that'll be, that, that will take like hours. Yeah, I see. The yeah. vision, though, that I want to hit on is just not changing the identity of my list. That's okay. something I really want to do. We don't want to change yeah. And yeah. before we move on, from the vision on that one too, yeah, because I kind of forgot, I think, what our original purpose is in this one. But um, I think that it's making sure that with whatever it is that we're doing, we're centering what the residents of Isla Vista want mm -hmm. and what the majority, or I don't, I don't want to use the term majority, but what the vast majority of the residents of Isla Vista want mm -hmm. and not forgetting that when we're, right. when we're doing our work. Huh. And I think that goes back to what Natalie said about Community representation and leadership. <coughs> and I, have, I have something I want to throw in. The the whole notion of um, uh, we we've sort of seen an antagonism between the homesteaders and the transients, if you will. You know, I mean that, that obviously that's a that's a very simplistic way of expressing it. But yet, I would argue that even the tra the uh, homesteaders are transients. You know, we don't know how long we're going to be here. I mean, I don't know whether I'm going to be here in another year. I may be dead, I may move, we don't know. God Keep forbid. off that. But God part. forbid, let's not do that. <laughs> but, but somehow or another, we have to navigate those two communities into a shared community. Somehow or another, we, we have to um, express, you, you know, I, I, I tend to be the one that says, oh, this is a great place to live, we have, I gotta do all sorts of things <coughs> to make it an even better place to live, so people are gonna wanna move here and stay here. Well, that may not be, that's not very realistic, really realistically speaking. Um, so somewhere between where I have been with my life and where you now are with your life, Natalie, is, is something I think that's really the cool thing about Isla Vista. Yeah. And we, we need to maximize both I somehow in, in, a, in a shared community and uh, not pit one against the other. I guess that's my, my two cents. So can we ask you as follow-up to, to what Spencer said. Can we ask you to take what you just heard 
and boil it into a draft, mm -hmm. totally draft, big capital letters draft. And I, what I'd like to see is three or four important visions, in other words, the 50,000 foot, and then three or four that are down here mm -hmm. in terms of yeah. exercising the, yeah. the, the powers, the powers yeah. stuff. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, can we plan. ask you to do that? That is the plan. That okay. is the plan. All right, and if I can get this recording and yeah, oh, I'm actually I'm I'm finally actually um, partly from the from yesterday because uh, Spencer had wanted that quickly and also because I've just got more time now I'm finally getting back onto actually doing editing and so okay cool yeah because yeah, I'll, 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 be really I'll do this helpful. one next so that I can have it done in a couple of days and okay it'll be, yeah perfect yeah because yeah. I'm taking notes but being able to watch it to see exactly what people said would be really helpful in yeah designing that so I I, I actually wanted to respond to some of the things that Natalie was was talking about and and um, kind of tie it together with a couple other things so right now or actually even but right now. When our district came into being, <coughs> there were already a couple different districts. There was the, I mean, there were a couple different entities that, that really did a lot. I mean, there was the Park District, and then there's the Isla Vista Community Network. And, and, and when I talk to people, and I've talked to, I'm actually just a very specific person, like I've spent a lot of time talking to Jeff Hodge from the San Inez Community Service District, and he'll actually kind of point to me, mm -hmm. and he'll like, so you know what you guys need to do? You guys need to get the police uh, department, you know, showing up to your meetings and doing, doing reports. And I've heard from people in the community that, you know, back when we had the park district, the police would show up and they would do reports. Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, well, I mean, we, I guess we could ask them to do that, but to be honest, the Isla Vista Community Network already has a large number of people from a diverse right. number of stakeholders showing up, including um, like high-level representation from the university, including high-level representation from the county, including, and so the police show up there, we get represent representatives from um, UCPD and the um, uh, Sheriff's Department yeah. showing up, oh. giving joint reports, and uh, and, and so I'm, it's, not, it's not clear to me that it makes sense to directly just try to co-opt that and like take that into IB, mm -hmm. the IBCSD, particularly since we have a we have a limited set of powers. Now police does fall under our powers, but the but because the IVCN is kind of operating outside of a limited scope of powers, it, it always felt to me like it's just okay, well that that can continue to be its more general meaning and we focus on the powers that we have. But I could totally appreciate it like if other people just like disagree, but then we need to figure out how to like structure that to fit together. I'd like right. to hear more is is that what Joan considers the Mac today. Well, so there's there's some interesting complexity there. Um, so Joan doesn't. Do, there is no Mac today. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but she said there's an organization like it. Yes, and so yeah. Joan, however, does describe the IBCN like a Mac. And I and many of us are getting the impression that that the goal would be um, from the county side right now to convert the IBCN into the Mac. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, which is which is an interesting one because um, when we had first started bringing up the Municipal Advisory Council within the context of the CSD, there were a few different ways of looking at it. One of which was to have um, us become the MAC in addition right. to being the CSD, and one was to have the uh, totally separate body appointed and elected or whatever, and one was to kind of take the IVCN and kind of uh, anoint it as the MAC. Mm -hmm. And it now looks like that's kind of what all the stuff I keep hearing from Joan always makes it sound like she's going towards that direction. Um, but well, that we could influence that. We could money, influence right? that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so I, I the question well, is, is yeah. whether we Please. and because our power is just to fund it. Our power is not to yeah, construct right. it. Talking too much about it in a way that like the, about the Mac itself. We have a we'll, we'll the during the long term planning we can talk more directly about the Mac. But just yeah, keep going. But, okay. Yeah. Because well, I, I I'm just I'm bringing it up from the perspective because I think that's from the vision perspective of like is if our vision for example was that the CSD is the focal point, then we need mm -hmm. to figure out how to like you know start working with other entities to. Such as like the, maybe the CN maybe just needs to not exist, or if our or if we want to empower the CN, then maybe we need to think through our funding process for the MAC in order to to empower them, but then make it so that we already have now a standing agenda item to figure out some great partnership between the two of us. Right. Um, but and one thing I'll add though, because um, as far as the CN being an operating organization, it's they've made it pretty clear that it's nice. just a network. Yeah. That they yeah. don't want to historically that's what it's been. Yeah. That they do network. not want to have. Hearings. Yeah. They want to be informed, but they do not want to yeah. make recommendations. They do not want to take action. Um, oh, what's been really mind. interesting, though, is that since Joan came into the supervisor position, um, Gina's and, um, and, 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 and Joan have been kind of like pushing to get these little subcommittees, and the subcommittees are designed in a way where they, they, are, they are supposed to actually like try to put forward more, more strong recommendations. So, so that the parking light, for example, was technically an IVCN subcommittee. Uh, and in the end of it, I think. Yeah. Uh, we'd like started as a business entity thing, but it kind of like shifted over towards, um, and the, um, uh, and, and then now we're doing like the, the noise uh, meetings are, are, are an IVCN subcommittee. Right. That, and, and as far as I know, that was all kind of <laughs> essentially organized by, by Gina. Yeah. 
Right. So. But at the same time, I also see the supervisor's office coming to members of our board just as frequently, if not more. And I don't want this okay. to be a, a competition of representation or power. But well, no, that, but that, that's why actually I, I think it's important to bring up during the visiting session because essentially it, it can it can accidentally become a competition over over representation mm -hmm. of, of like, do we want people coming to us or do we want them going to the CN and how do we both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think, yeah. It, and I, I, sorry, I just wanted to get this in before we move on, but I think that um, when I look at the Isla Vista Community Network, I think it's important to remember that the vast majority of people in that room are service providers from different, mm -hmm. either it's nonprofits, yeah. uh, groups affiliated with the university, um, there's county representation there. Um, there are residents who are unaffiliated and just want to hear what's going on, and, and that's sort of the, the whole idea of it being a network. I don't think that it has very much at all to do, I think one component of what they do is they sort of provide feedback and occasional recommendations that are small, like low level, informal mm -hmm. to the county or to our supervisor. I think that that is completely distinct from like <coughs> what I view our project is. I think our project requires us to be a little more creative about who is involved in the decision making power about what happens in Isla Vista in the long term in a world where sort of the CSD or whatever succeeds the CSD uh, like is the decision making power and sort of is taking on some of those responsibilities. And for me, when I think about that, I guess in you know, the easiest way to think about it in the short term is a Mac, is how do we construct a Mac that looks like the community and doesn't just look like, um, you know, a bunch of service providers in a room talking about the different things that they're working on. Because there's a time and place for both of them, yeah. but they serve very different functions and they also can garner much different levels of support and make it much, uh, you know, easier for things to get gun done if you do it right and maybe difficult if you do it incorrectly. I, I don't want to pit the two against each other, but I want to pose a really critical uh, distinction between the two. Uh, I used to go regularly to the CN meetings. I mean, for years I actually went to those things. And uh, about a year and a half ago I kind of fell off because of other responsibilities. But I do recall toward the last, in the back of my mind, I would think, how many residents of Isla Vista are here? And really when it came down to it, there were many, many meetings where I was there where I was the only <laughs> resident of Isla Vista mm -hmm. around the table. Mm -hmm. Everyone else was a service provider, someone who worked in Isla Vista, was there eight to five, gone at night. And we are, on the other hand, uh, a body that's constituted uh, at least primarily from people that are currently <coughs> residing in Isla Vista. You know, that, that, that you, you got to vote on us because you resided in Isla Vista. And you, if you didn't, you didn't get to vote there. And so, um, I mean, there really is a critical distinction that's here. And, and I've thought that to when I make a recommendation to Gina and Joan on my replacement, I really think it should be Someone that rep understands the interests of the county, but that's a resident of Isla Vista. That's, yeah. that's yeah. here 24 hours a day because yeah. your vision is different if you're out here and your vision for this board's gonna be different. Still respect it, you gotta respect the position of the county and understand what the county's all about in mm -hmm. terms of the transition of power, I would say, to, to this board. But. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my recommendation to them is you, you need you need somebody that lives out here. And I, God I don't love know the if there's that many people, but somebody. You know, God love the service providers, you know, the, the nonprofits and so forth that work out here. I mean, that's that's critical stuff, and, you know, we, we should all be grateful for that. But yet in terms of decision-making, do we give more weight to a someone who happens to be here on during business hours but doesn't really reside here? I mean, that's, uh, I would be a little uncomfortable with seeing that as the MAC. Because yeah. Well, yeah, the yeah, MAC right. isn't municipal. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. It's extra municipal. Yeah, and, and, I've, and I've also got the impression from some of the people I've talked to that, that people who are on IVCN don't really want it to become the MAC. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think that it's, it sort of goes back to that old adage about politics, which is that politics is the art of the possible. But I think in, the, in terms of government, Sometimes we pigeonhole <coughs> ourselves into looking at sort of what the lay of the land is currently and then thinking, well, how could we empower these existing 
organizations, which a lot of times can be good, but I think that if we adopt that framework too much, then we forget the, you know, sometimes, um, like, you know, we can just sort of do these things. Like, you were giving the idea of, like, um, having reports from the police at, like, all of our meetings. And, I mean, I think it's an amazing idea. Like, I would love yeah. to see that happen, like, as soon as possible. And, um, you know, there the two components of that are, like, number one, you know, we, as the CSD, we do claim one thing, which is that we are a government with a broad mandate uh, to do a, a broad uh, array of services. Um, the five of us are all elected from, you know, we're residents of islands. So we're the people mm -hmm. that we have just been saying that the community network may not have a whole lot of representation from. Um, and at the same time, um, we, we could have the ability in the future to, like, exert leverage in that way over, um, you know, say, like, you know, law enforcement. I think that's one way of going about it is putting ourselves on a path to slowly get more leverage over these institutions so we make sure that it's part of their operations that they know that they have to come and speak with, whether it's the CSD, oh. whether it's one of our subcommittees, something like that. So that turned into a little bit of a ramble, but... No, uh, I, I think this is a good discussion. Good, yeah. Like, what are we? That's This yeah. is what yeah. we're discussing. Yeah. What are we? So... Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought this up because I, I think that a lot of... For a lot of us, it's good for us to hear all these things and yeah. hear just very candidly what everyone else is like thinking, <coughs> because sometimes we may have assumptions that other people don't necessarily share. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. like that interaction right there, where you mentioned the you know we're the center, and then Jay was like, "Well, wait a second, it, it, do we all agree on that?" Like that was a good thing. That to, was excellent. It's a good rabbit hole to mm -hmm. go. That's down. why we did this. That's why yeah. we're doing this yeah. session. <laughs> Jonathan, what were you gonna ask? I was gonna say, um, are we ready to move on to long-term planning? I think so. Okay. And. Um, how I was envisioning that we can maybe do this is we have it focused on one service at a yeah. time. And yeah. obviously, like after we go through all, we can come back, we can compare. But mm -hmm. I think it could be helpful if we go one eight, service eight parts. Yes, um, so I, I have a recommended structure. You guys can oh, tell me if you want it or not, and then we can make adjustments real quick. Does that structure include like an order of the services? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, the, so we have eight services, tenant mediation, community facilities, public safety, parking, MAC, APC, lighting site, blocks, and graffiti abatement. Is so that the order you wanted to do them in? Yes. Um, um, can you repeat more slowly? Yes. Tenant mediation, community facilities, public safety, parking, MAC, APC, lighting and sidewalks, graffiti abatement. And then... Wow, that is... I, 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 I'm, I'm actually very, very interested in that because that is just... That is not the way that I even clumped them in my head. I, so that's oh, awesome. Uh, I think I almost ordered them the same way they are in the bill, but I think parking is second technically. Oh, so you didn't you didn't like carefully think through an order? I, I came them. They came. Just this is the order I remember them in. Okay. It, the order is. I think. I mean, if you want to order them let's separately, just, yeah. Let's yeah. Just keep rolling. Yeah. I'm so sorry to fade. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the way I'm well, I just find that just not really fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> say, that's what we were afraid of when we had sexual harassment training early. <laughs> yeah. uh, fade. Okay, so the way, and to, for, for time purposes, I've put 10 immediate, and this is just based on, you know, where we're at with these things and where I've seen the board being, I'm gonna, we can change these. 10 mediation, 14 minutes. Community facility, seven minutes. Public safety, seven minutes. Parking, two minutes. Mac, uh, I, we just had a significant discussion, so let's say 10 minutes. Um, APC, seven minutes, lighting and sidewalks, 14 minutes, and I have a reason for that, and then graffiti abatement, five minutes, and then uh, I have two additional points, which are community engagement and then partnerships, which are similar, and that's 15 minutes between the two of those. And did you say so just two minutes for parking? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just because I, from what I've heard at the board level is that that might not be something we'd want to do right away, but we can expend okay. some time for that. We have some flex time. I, 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 I would like some time to talk about powers that we don't, we have, don't have. have. Okay, yeah, yeah. Could we start off with that, just so Jay, or I don't know, that Whatever. just I be think interesting. Yeah, that would be, I, yeah, that be interesting I, to hear. I, I see it better once we've okay. gone. All right, yeah, yeah. okay, can. cool. Okay, yeah, so, so I'm gonna give that one like five minutes. Um, and then I'll start the timer, so. And then the structure I'd like us to look at for this, and I'll go pull up our service plan, I'm gonna pull is service um, plan first we'll review what it says in the service plan very quickly, and then we'll discuss uh, you know, our thoughts, what value we want to bring with that service, and then we'll discuss um, 
what do we want to achieve? And then, because that's what Ethan has been saying, like, what do we want to achieve in that area? And then we'll come back to like exactly what we need to do later. But um, does that sound good meeting to you? Meeting at a later meeting. Meeting at a later at, meeting. At yeah, yeah. Pool, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so let me pull up, where is the service plan? I think, it's, I think it's going to be complicated us, with, with yeah, seven yeah. people in order to manage to do things like two minutes on parking, no matter how little we have to say on it. But or we're like five we minutes on the feet of it. And if it doesn't work out, <coughs> we'll switch ship things around as long as it's don't miss it. I can back a bit. Okay, so. How much time we got? I have 20. Right. We're good. We're I mean, good. We're going to do a good okay. 60 minutes. And then <laughs> Hey, there you go. Service plan. Uh, put it on the website. It makes it easier to cool. get to it any time. Yeah. Okay, so tenant mediation. So I can I can do this one almost from top of your head. Right, yeah. So basically, what the service plan says in tenant mediation, because it's not loading yet, is that, uh, and this is not outdated, but that the county provides. Uh, tenant mediation services to all the unincorporated areas, which are the, you know, but the basic version of that, which is uh, technical assistance over the phone. So that's what's existing right now. So that's, and it's, it was through the City of Santa Barbara's program, and that's no longer the case. Um, and then what was discussed in the service plan was a contract with the Santa Barbara Rental Housing Mediation Task Force that would bring their tenant mediation services to Isla Vista in a similar fashion as they do with the City of Goleta and the City of Carpinteria. Um, and that was estimated to cost $30,000 for one year based, and I think they based that on the amount of service, uh, you know, pe like people calling in to the technical assistance program. Uh, and that was like around 60 to 70 per year was from 93117 is how much they got. Uh, so that's really what the service plan says. Um, it also said that this was the power that we added into the district because with no other special district has this power and that this is a power that we'd like I mean at the time UCSB students had tenant mediation and our other two main constituency groups the SBCC students and the working families in Isla Vista did not have anything like this so that was another consideration that we had at the time was that uh, we needed to provide service to those to those two other groups that UCSB students weren't having but now UCSB students also do not have tenant mediation services, so all of our residents are lacking this service. So right. that's the review of the service plan. So I guess we can move into discussing our current thoughts, and then we can discuss what we want to achieve. So you mentioned um, how this, the county was previously contracting with the City Rental Housing Mediation Program for the base level of service. Did you see the update on what the county is now doing? I actually didn't read that email because okay. I haven't looked at the email. So the county has now contracted with the Legal Aid Foundation oh, yes, that's right, to that's provide right. um, not tenant mediation, but services and information to residents on tenants' rights and responsibilities and information about conflict resolution process. Uh, however, no one in Isla Vista knows that other than the three of us. Yes. <laughs> so there's still a lot of yeah. The supervisor's office didn't know about that until we had a meeting. <laughs> They we, didn't know we about prompted that them to find service. this out. Yeah. Yeah. And is this a countywide service? <laughs> to the for the unincorporated areas. For but, the unincorporated yeah. areas. But in the past, this was a huge focus on Isla Vista. Isla Vista accounted for about 60 inquiries yeah, per support. year when it was still in, in place. Um, however, the Isla Vista Tenants Union doesn't even know about this. Um, so CHO doesn't know about so this. So we need to jump on this right now and take a lead in embracing it and almost making it sorry do we know uh, how much the contract is for uh i can tell you that but uh, this service isn't um where's the email from gina i'll pull it up yeah oh i think gina you my personal natalie you did this didn't you no, you just had one meeting with gina and no it wasn't <laughs> me. it wasn't me at all um <laughs> so but this service does not provide the mediation services right. of right two folks coming together, sitting down with a professional or a volunteer. Okay. But, but was that available before? That's available to Goleta and Carpentry in Santa Barbara, but not available here before. I think this seems similar to what we had before. It's the same thing that the city was doing as far as yeah. providing information. Technical assistance. City of Santa Barbara. Consultation. Yeah, but they were providing the consultation to Isla Vista. But, the, but the, the, I, 
Before, they were also providing uh, telephone mediation services. They weren't, just telephone consultation. Yeah. For the unincorporated area. No mediation for Isla Vista. We've what? never had mediation. So do we need more from than this? Yeah, so, because this no, is no, what yeah, the CHO, status quo no, was a year ago. City one. The okay. We're back so to the status, status quo. So we need to jump on to the... No. Oh, I, I, let's, let's keep the conversation. I need to do telephone Senate. mediation. Yeah. You, no, telephone mediation is one of the ways that the city provides mediation services to their mediation customers. But Isla Vista was never a mediation. Yeah, no, customer. I'm just I'm just shocked by that because I really thought that, that they had that on their website. No, they no, no, we never um, had mediation here. Yeah. No, I other than by CHO. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. they didn't do mediation. But yeah, okay. Not they for did. us. They no, did for oh, UCSB yeah, students. For UCSB students. Yeah, but it was hokey. Yeah. 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 It yeah. wasn't yeah. what we yeah. wanted. It wasn't yeah. what we but, wanted. But yeah. perhaps maybe um, because we do have a working group on this, we don't have to get into the weeds, but yeah. um, I'll start off with what I think the hope <coughs> of this is, and it's to provide a more equitable system for tenants and landlords to resolve disputes and ultimately raise the quality of life through that. Well, if they're doing the education on the front end, that means we can do a service on the back end after, you know, we could get referrals. Mm -hmm. or And I, I don't know who the lady was that came and talked to us, but she said she sounded like she had a decent program to get people to the table. So the she's not interested in mediation. She's yeah. more interested in facilitated discussion. Yeah. Small and mediation is what she said. Small. Not, not actual yeah. mediation. Yeah. Wait, Ethan, can you repeat what yeah, you so said? Equitable provide system. a more equitable system for landlords and tenants to resolve disputes, ultimately resulting in higher living conditions. And do you want to say anything about how these disputes are resolved? Like what's been said is like the legally binding agreement at the end? Yes, yeah, so, so that? having a collaborative process for tenants and landlords to come together, ultimately reaching a enforceable that agreement. I, that I would leave it at, if we're, if we're staying up here, I would leave off the legally binding yeah. because, it, because it precludes a lot of things, it seems to me. But, I mean, the intention through the whole process has been legally binding, but ultimately it's not legally binding if both parties don't agree to it. So they can start mediation, and if they right. don't ar arrive at an agreement, they don't arrive at an agreement. I just worry if we have a vision document that says our goal is a legally binding yeah. at the end, we box ourselves in. Early so this, on. this doesn't have to be really part of the visioning document. This is like right. what for what for me to keep in mind, or and for our working group to keep okay. in mind when we're right. going after services. This so is, does this is anybody know if there's a model out there in another university town? Well, that I thought the model was Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara yeah, the city the of Santa Barbara is <laughs> fantastic. It has a fantastic model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, about how you get binding agreements. Yep. Oh really? Oh, they so really. This service plan was largely developed based on their recommendations and consultation with the group. Yeah, we're just having to trouble of bringing them to the to here. Mm -hmm. What they've got and their people, because why duplicate it? Just bring yeah. their people here, correct? Yeah, and honestly, I think the biggest barrier has been when the county stopped contracting with them and didn't inform the community, and the third district supervisor hadn't been informed by the community development department that that even happened. That kind of created a big breakdown in communication because when I went to the city to try to bring them to our meeting, they're like, "Well, you should go to the county first because the county told us that they don't want us doing this anymore." But but remember, the the city's going to look at us and know that this is a more difficult community. We have the highest volume of all. Right. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know. Actually, actually no, the city of really? Santa Barbara has. Well, well they got Guinea, but you know, other than <laughs> yeah. Dario. But the city was very excited and uh, helpful yeah. when they came throughout the whole process, and the leadership is still the same for this. Okay. Yeah, and the numbers that we had in the service plan actually came from asking people from the Rental and Housing Mediation Task Force to give us a number, and then even I like pushed back and I'm like, no, give us a real number. So, gave so, us that so did it all become about the funding? Calculations. We just funding's good too. The whole thing is just that the county was providing the base level of service. And then that ended and wasn't known by leadership. And I think that's where we yeah. we now know what the situation is. And UCSB has pulled back. Yeah. Based that's mostly, that's made really important. New. Yeah. Yeah. mostly based on personnel, based on the fact that what we've all learned is that somebody that was over there was sort of doing this on an ad hoc basis, but then promoting it as a program. 
And then when that person left, all of a sudden everybody else is going, we're, this isn't a program, we're not doing, you know. So that's kind of, is that a fair assessment of? Yeah, so I think there was fragmented service being provided that's now ended without a clear vision of what's next, and mm -hmm. that's where we come in. Yeah, and, 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 and this, this is an example of a service that like a while ago, back when, back when it like first come up, because I would wanted something much, well. wow. I wanted something much stronger, and there's I'll something uh, that yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of button that we pressed before in the hallway, and it kind of um, became almost like a compromised <laughs> position to have have this rental housing. And, and I've always been like, ah, it doesn't seem like. It. But now that it's it's like this power vacuum land, it's like no, it's really important for also us to like use left. this power that we have in order to pull this off. And I see the mistake that I made. It was Galita that had the telephone mediation, yeah. and it was then us that I, I pulled up a talk cool. that I gave on this. Thing. So it seems to me like um, the. The first course of action, I mean, I don't want to micromanage the committee too much, would be to try to get more information from Santa Barbara. Yeah. We, we need to do that. Yeah. To restore the service. Yeah. We need to restore the service. Yeah. I think that okay. we're all over that. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else additionally I that people would like to add to the vision and moving forward with this beyond like yeah. whatever we're doing right yeah, now? Yeah, I think we know yeah. what we need I to do. I think we got this far. I would like to. The vision in this report is pretty vague about what did we expect to accomplish. It just says we're going to use their services without saying what those services really <laughs> were to well, rental mediation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, rental mediation for every Isla Vista resident. Yeah, I think it's the big one that we've all sort of, and that just means that when there's a dispute, both parties can. There's a mechanism to bring the parties to the table, and they sit down and they can hash out an agreement with the. Facilitator. I'm wondering also for, I'm, I'm more concerned as to scope as I, less as I am to execution, which I think on the execution end of this is fine. I'm kind of wondering where it comes in like with building codes. I don't know if that's part of, I'm kind of wondering if that falls under this area layer. Planning commission so more yeah, building yeah. codes would be either area planning and then enforcement would be our code enforcement power, yeah. which is not activated So yet. it's not, it, this would not fall under the no. audit. But building codes could be like involved in the discussion of a mediation. So I was going to say, if theoretically, like let's say that my steps fall in, who do I, like is that? Code enforcement. That goes to code enforcement. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so one, we're talking about residential, correct? Yes. Yeah. Because okay. we have, we have not made that, a, we've just said rental. Mediation. We haven't said residential rental mediation. Uh -huh. oh, well, rental housing mediation. Is okay. The okay. Question. How? Okay. I didn't yeah. hear that. So one of the assumptions in that service plan Houston. text was that we would be contracting with the um, with with the rental housing mediation task force. Now we've been talking about some other groups. Uh, one of the things that had come up when we were discussing this with, for example, the tenants union, um, there was one of the AB three meetings where I actually just asked them, was the CHO doing a good job? And the response was, you know, actually now that you ask, we didn't think that they really were. And then the question is, is well, is the Santa Barbara Rental Housing Mediation Task Force a good option? Well, if you actually look at who they have as mediators, one of their lead mediators for many years was Chuck Eckert. Um, oh. and, and so... Well, I think he was with the university, not with the... No, that was, city. that was, he, he for a while he was with George, the, I think, from the tenant, not Chuck. I've got, I, 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 not on this exact side that I've got right here, but yeah, this is the, uh, so we have the Fox mediating the hen house. Yeah. yeah. And so the question, and, 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 so the, and so one of the thought processes was, is like, do we, um, uh, to be expansive in our thought process of who does it, and then potentially also at some point look into, do we want to do it? Um, we actually, this is one of the few powers that we have where we have the option to do it. Most of our, most of, most things we have only the option to contract for it. Well, I, I think, think we should have not putting a negative video. connotation on anybody's involvement in anything when it comes to our, like, board record of, like, you know, when we're mentioning people's names, we have to be really, really yeah. cognizant of if they were actually part of that and what connotation that we're putting all of that in. I've, I'm, I'm already so weirdly public on the fact that I've said these things. You don't have to agree with them, so. So, <laughs> can, I, can I just say, I don't think we want to go there because the, we're talking about salaries just for a lead mediator yeah. or so far beyond. I think we, this is where we need to. But I also want to say quit real quickly here. I think that in terms of our strategy here, and I've talked to the committee about this, and I want to recommend to the committee again, this could be something the university would fund. Um, in response to what you were saying, uh, Jay, Less than a minute left. Student, student, it was really the students who did not like the CHO process. Yeah. So this has changed a lot though since I know it has maybe it doesn't have the yeah. 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 So I would just hope that you could put together the tenant mediation package as something to go to the university, but it's gotta be really tight. Right. I do, we should bring up what the discussion with IBTU was in yeah. terms of like what they wanna go with. 
which is the conflicts like what conflict solutions center like a non-profit yeah. that does like mediation but and we're, okay. we're looking into that but we're also looking into what we originally okay. yeah. were successful yeah. with real quick if you want to go back to the document to close this out that we make sure we agree on what we have written it, so the, this the other is thing i think we should do is if we're going to go offer university money to kick start this program again we need to then make some decisions being fair to the oh, university sure. and fair to us about well, do we think that's an ongoing program that should be really paid for out of our tax in the future? And then the university is just paying for a temporary piece, and then we use the 200000 for the other things we envision with the university money, which is more infrastructure and mm -hmm. those yeah. types of things, those one-time things. Right. Yeah. So, great point. Just the timing is good to go to the university now because they've pulled back, and they understand they've pulled back, and they see it as something that's needed. So I think the timing is good, but it has to be has to have a pretty bow on it. But didn't they pull maybe for funding? Yeah. But didn't they pull back because they didn't have enough resources to do it well? I thought you said they. No, they no. Lack of staffing, you said. Well, no, but in that office, not or in the whole. It was an organizational issue. Oh, okay. Understood. Okay, ready to move on to community facilities. Is this good with everybody? What we have written yeah. here. Is yeah. this what we discussed? Is it the? Ex mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I'm. Just the last thing, is this the extent to which we see the tenant mediation program going right now? Or if we're talking about long term, is this our long term whole adoptable, this is it plan? This Sorry to yeah, throw I mean, this back that's, into that's the question for you. Well, it short see if it works. This is short to mid, yeah. yeah like, I mean, we, won't just work and we don't know how to do it longer time. Time. Okay, until we have it. Sure. But yes. one more thing that we are missing here, which came up a lot in our discussion with the TU, is um, making sure that. Through this service is easily accessible, and with that, having a staff presence in Isle Vista. Oh, I yes, that's I correct. That. So, staff, staff presence, presence and outreach. Yeah. Great. See, this, is, this is excellent what we need for all the other uh, points today. This is perfect. All right, so community facilities at seven minutes. Um, let me just get to it in the plan. <coughs> The first one in all the sections, if that makes it easier. So uh, it's on page 20? Yeah, here it is. Okay, so the current thing we have right now are, this has changed again because of what's happened since the district form, but there's this building and there's the community center, the 976 and the 970. Um, this building upstairs has a lot of service providers in it. Downstairs is our district office and the community room, which we now manage. Um, the community center will go online in about a year and what we proposed in the service plan was a grant writer who would be responsible for bringing in grants similar to what we've already been doing to help provide better services through the community room in a wide variety of issues from mental health to you know family planning to anything like that and that's what we've already applied for in the Bauer grant so that's that was been that was the idea in the um, service plan would be to use a grant writer to program and leverage these community spaces to provide uh, additional services, maybe outside of our direct scope, for the community. So that's these are our, our assets, are these this building, soon to be the next building, and then the original plan was a grant writer. So what is what are your current thoughts and what do we want to achieve here? Did they ever get the 1.7 million that they were trying to get for that? It wasn't 1.7, but 1 we got a lot. We got, got 1.2? No, I think we got an additional 500. 500? Yeah, so like 8 or 900,000. Oh. Yeah. So we ha it's it's going to undergo an additional renovation. That's why it's not open yet. How's the fundraising going for that? You know, the private fundraising. We're not doing just, really private fundraising cute. for um, for the infrastructure we're yeah. doing fundraising for like programmatic stuff so okay. yeah we're not doing so there is fundraising going on SB gives yeah we have eleven $1 hundred dollars raised oh I am under uh, yeah. are we promoting that we, we should I'll, I'll talk to you about it in okay. another in a board sorry meeting. yeah next board meeting yeah so I think that the first thing here is for us to um, increase our service capacity for managing 970 in Barbadero um, community room and then assuming the primary leadership slash management of uh, the community center when it comes online. Okay, so that is a goal you think that we should get yeah, is management of the nine seventy six. Yeah. Does that gonna is that gonna create that any oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you first. Is that gonna create any conflict? 
among our partners in the community? Well, I think we have to be collaborative in it, but I do think that this is the one one government agency with the specific power of managing community facilities. So I think that part's pretty clear. But as far as programming, I think that's where we, we collaborate. No, program, or I don't know yeah. programming, but running it, is that going to create any issues? Is there anybody else out there that wants to run it and is going to say so. no, you I should have? discussions with the Recreation and Parks about who is going to run it. There have been, I mean, Parks and Recreation, I'm pretty sure what their big thing is they want to fund a recreation coordinator, which I think that goes really big on programming. Yeah. Um, as far as That's nice. As, yeah, as far as management, and I, and I also, I see that somewhere that we collaborate. Um, people have mentioned to me, representatives of their district, not speaking for the district, but making, involved in the decisions, they've mentioned like, oh, maybe the CSD could go in half on a rec coordinator. And then that's when my thought process has been, well, I think, that's very clearly the park district, and then what you told us we couldn't do that. And there's a lot that right. says we can't do it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot that yeah. we can't do that. <laughs> right. But as far as um, managing and operating community facilities, we've been ex explicitly okay. given that power. Okay. Okay. That's good. I, I have personally been kind of hoping that 976 would go to the park district. Mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, but I, I, there's been like, it's not clear to me that, that um, it's not 100% clear to me that Rodney wants to do it, yeah. and so right. it's uh, and so the extent to which they wouldn't that like the, the operations there don't want to do it, then that's bad. But it's like, from an parks. organization's perspective, yeah. But it's but, well, it's interesting to me is that it's a building that is in a park that we were constantly using in coordination with things that we were doing in the parks. So like whenever we would have these events that Kim and I said we were running, we'd do stuff in the park right next to the building, and then we'd constantly be going back and forth in uh -huh. the building and using it for different things. And we had a concert in the building <laughs> with with us, with it, events that are outside the building in the park, and it just always fit well with what the parks were doing. Additionally, the parks the parks district has employees. They've got the kind of staff that I would expect to have. Like like with, with this building, we rely on the county hiring um, all of the janitorial staff. But I mean, if we're just running that building, then I'm anticipating that now we're going to have to start thinking about the staffing and operations of that building. Whereas the, and, and that would be, if we're, especially if, if we're against doing um, our own tenants mediation program, that would now be the only reason we would have staff is to, is to, is to run this building. Whereas the park district already has union negotiation processes, they already have to think about that sort of thing. It just kind of seems easier for them to, to assume it, particularly if a lot of what's going on there is recreation programming, and they already have the recreation Is that division just to do recreation yeah, programming? That's a good out of point. There? Is, that, is that what we want to do with that building, or that what we believe? Do we want that to be recreation focused, service focused? Oh, combination. I think it's exactly a combination. Yeah. 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 And, and I think that also it's important for us not to sort of try to. Uh, let assume what the position of other agencies are going to be because yeah, I think that in terms of I mean the main concern you brought up there was you know are we going to have to um, start hiring staff in order to do janitorial work I mean there are solutions to something like that we can always contract for something like that whether it is with the county the whether it's with a, a, an outside uh, agency and a, a, a local business and so I think that the service component to the building is key. We just had a discussion at one of the board meetings a couple um, weeks ago about food insecurity, and I've talked okay. to folks in the community about um, sort of uh, uh, working with the other uh, organizations that are in the area about expanding um, sort of the food pantry um, uh, situations that we have here. So now we have a couple different service providers that have that, but expanding that into um, a space like the community center and um, giving it more space, making it something that is available to both mm -hmm. students and the public, um, that's a big component of that. Um, it's not just recreation. And I don't, I'm, people seem to have pigeonholed what I was saying into like just recreation. I was saying that there would be a strong tie with recreation mm -hmm. that they would have. Um, I mean, a, a lot of services that we currently, um, people try to provide, they go to the park district, ask for sponsorship, put it in a park. It's not like, we directly, although that's one thing I really wish we kind of like could figure out some good way of doing. We don't directly have a good way of addressing food insecurity um, and with the, with among just our limited powers other than to just provide facilities, but that's also something that the park district is capable of doing, providing space. And they already know how to provide space. Over, space. But we can go another two minutes. I was hoping the county long term would give the district these buildings. Me too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. with you on that. I don't think the county really wants to manage them. They want to give them to, to the... So that should be our, in the long term vision. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the vision of these. Yeah. Yeah. We, my Take these assets, we'll yeah. manage them, and we'll make money. Right. My yeah. question would be, how are we allowed to create 
like, um, sorry, I'm having trouble putting it together. Like, are we allowed to, gen like, create a, not like a business plan, but a way to generate money to bring it back into the community? Yeah. Center? For yes. example, like having a thrift mm -hmm. store attached to it mm -hmm. that would do people could donate to and get a tax rate off, and also we could, you know, provide low cost clothing to people and then pay for the community center with it. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. we can do things like that. Trying to think of ways that. Can we do that things like good. that? One, uh, one common example was uh, a low cost rental for quinceañeras and. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So then what's the dip? Oh, no. I don't see, I don't know the size of it as much as that, but... I just want to say, don't get into that business. <laughs> oh, the rental for parties? Oh, yeah. As someone who plans parties <laughs> for a living, it's not... I, would, so I, I never thought about I would say that, George. Like, <laughs> I, I see the fear, but that was also, like, a major push for why we put this yeah. power in. I know. You just have to realize that it's going to cost you. Yeah. it's it, it would be complicated, yeah, to run a facility like that. Well, right? I mean, it, it, it's just going to be really hard on your building. Yeah. But that's there's the reason why we'd be, we'd be charging for people using it. In well, there's a, an automatic yeah. 11 to 19 percent um, just wear and tear that you should calculate in when it comes to even people yeah. using your soap. You have to count mm -hmm. that. The administrative aspect of time, yeah. your toilet paper, someone accidentally falling into the wall and creating yeah. a hole. All of those things like... Yeah. <laughs> but we also want to <laughs> building used as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. But eight to eight. <laughs> Every day. Yeah, and much that. later on. Yeah, Thursday and much Friday, later on. So. Yeah. We could always go over and visit the Galita Community Center and see how that that's That's a great Yeah, well, that's, great that's one of the things I was going to bring up when someone mentioned the business plan is that we really need to be looking at the way that other community centers mm -hmm. like are managed throughout the South Coast and seeing if we can take elements of that and put them in there because yeah. there is going to have to be sort of a financial component of um, like how it's going to be managed. And I think that if we're thinking about things that we can sort of begin to do in the short to medium term, it's work on that sort of financial plan yeah. um, and work with other members of the community who have been involved in doing something like that before. Because I know there are people who come on these. Frank would be a great one. one. Frank, and I know that Lanny has talked to me about it yeah. before as well. Mm -hmm. And I get the sense that the county, I'm not saying they're dragging their feet, but they don't want to get that thing developed too fast, but then they're responsible for running it. And yeah, so they're yeah. really yeah. looking for, I think, us to evolve to run so it. So you're saying we should maybe approach the county soon-ish, saying this is something we're interested in? I, I would. I think that's a good idea. I, I that's would a say long-term, we're interested yeah. in, in I, I mean, I always envision we'd inherit these buildings. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Jay, what do you think, just because? And I just. Really quick, sorry, Natalie, before you say, we did run out of time on this. We could do a little more, or well, we could move on. But I think we could always come back to all of them and one off them to have a better discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're just uh, getting a look. We're getting a vision, or uh, uh, overview. Like this, All this will come back to the yeah. board. Like yeah. This will be a document that comes back to you, and right. we can revise yeah. and revise. And I'm thinking we take the next two board meetings to go over this document mm -hmm. and then pass something yeah. Yeah. or mm -hmm. approve something soon. So next thing is... And, but everyone's good with what we have written here. Like this is the consensus mm -hmm. of the group. Okay. Consensus is not quite the right word, but I mean this but is. But this I'm, is I'm has it, we've the discussion. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. That this is what was discussed in the discussion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the ideas that were put forward. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's uh, a okay. draft of what a <laughs> consensus might look so like. So I'm going to give us a extended nine minutes now for public safety, just since that seems like a more. What, how much we need. So <laughs> nine minutes for public safety. Is and that policing services? Yeah. That is, yeah. In the document? Okay. So Contract in the community policing part of the service plan, we described something similar to what we already operate now, which is um, hiring five non-sworn cadets at $15 an hour. CSOs are actually like 16 or so. And having them... Uh, be around on weekend nights to cover high traffic hours. We had put 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. I think that's about how much we do now, which is a little more. good. A little more. We do a little more now. Um, in the service plan, we had assumed that we'd pay foot patrol uh, 0.25 FTE to fund their staff position to coordinate that. But it looks like UCPD is doing is absorbing that cost since right. this is a project that they'd like to do. So, and, but that was the extent of what we had put into the service plan, which is essentially what we're doing now. Maybe now we're doing it a smaller amount, but really, I think the budget that we had assumed here was 75000 and we're spending 50000 now. So we're not too far off from the original vision. So now we can talk about more like expansion of that vision and other things we can do. 
Yeah, and as far as what we have in the service plan, um, I mean, pu public safety has been my top priority in all of this. Yeah. Um, I think, though, that what we have in the service plan is very specific, and I think we may have evolved from it, because now we've put into place this creative program, which is tackling a, a much needed issue, yep. and I think we're going to continue to develop ideas um, that might be separate from looking to achieve those five I love the foot patrol cadets. Yeah. No, I think we've already achieved that just in a yeah. different way. So Yeah, yeah. so so my uh, the thing about all offer as far as the big picture is I think that we should continue to expand community oriented policing services, especially those that, that use non sworn employees to hopefully someday reduce the need to have so many sworn police officers out here at a time. It's a reduced need for sworn officers. Over time, by by increasing uh, the amount of non-sworn public safety personnel and services, so that you you accomplish that with a really unique way of this safety program, you expand it into it. Is there some other service out there in the public safety arena that the CSOs could that you could develop around? So or does somebody have an idea? Well, well, also as far as um, when it moves more into civilian enforcement. There's the example that we did look towards in this, which was the San Luis Obispo Student Neighborhood Assistance Program. And which is, Santa Barbara has that Yeah, too. now the city mm -hmm. of Santa Barbara yeah. is with Santa Barbara yeah. City College using non-sworn personnel to do more um, low-level enforcement. And if we look at... And by what do you mean by low-level enforcement? Noise, noise ordinance enforcement. But is, doesn't that other group in... You see, yeah, they, they don't do it in the long They don't do it They don't enforce. They let you know. They let you know that yeah. you might be in violation. In my mind, from it's just as effective. And I think it honestly builds more trust because they're not the enforcers, they're your friends, you no, know? I, I think that I, the big thing is that the enforcement still has to be done by someone, and right now it's being done by police with a capital P, and the people from outside the community who sometimes don't necessarily have the best relationships with the students. And so if you give that responsibility to someone who's I think it's going to erode the yeah, trust no. between, I think that the reason why the enforcers are the enforcers is because of the police, and then I want other people, like the CSOs, I don't want anyone to fear someone who's not sworn in any capacity. It, I don't want them feeling like they're going to get a citation from their friends. I don't want them feeling but like their friend's going to report them for being too incompetent. But it's working in St. Know? Louis, right? Yeah, and nationally, and what I'd also like to see in this is mm -hmm. the, the big central theme of bringing in residents to co-produce a safer community. Neighborhood yeah. Watch. Yeah, yeah, bringing more residents into yeah. the the public safety service so that it's not being done by the outside occupying group. Um, and but I, but I also yeah, respect yeah. that, I mean, there's different levels of involvement in that. Yeah, I and think, it, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I, I was just gonna say that, you know, maybe within that process also comes a reevaluation of what the rules are that are being enforced and whether or not the community is on board, whether or not they understand why there are certain rules that are put in place. And maybe, you know, um, throughout that process, there's the need to change some of those things. And so that comes hand in hand with devolving those. I don't know. If things. somebody showed up at my door who wasn't a cop and was like, hey, I'm giving you a ticket, I'd be like, get away from my door. Wait, but they, they have authority given to them. Yeah, the they're state. an officer, just not a one with a gun, a gun in the back. Yeah. 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 This is it. Yeah. No, no, Ethan and the UCI. Oh, like the yeah. city of Santa Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. But then the city of Santa Barbara also has CSOs, and their community service officers do have the power to, to cite. Yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah. The way that I saw the p public safety going, like I think that the CSO program is really, really beneficial. The safety it's station. The safety station. Yeah. And I think that that's really, really beneficial. The way that I kind of saw this evolving was in a, a different direction, because I think that that fast is going to kind of take care of itself, and UCIV has been doing a big supplement. I would really Four like to see way, um, more uh, sexual harassment, uh, rape, uh, all of those kinds of mediation, or not mediation, um, handling those through the police department. We talked about getting a investigator or a detective for sexual assault, specifically within IVFP, and just knowing how some of my friends' sexual assault cases were handled. I think that that is like a big red flag for me. And I think that the, if we're gonna make a priority list of like, I think that that should be one of the ones that we kind of make as a <coughs> priority. And when it comes to safety and IV also, um, we still do have a very high number of sexual assaults in, in our community, which I think is huge. And I like when it comes to like noise violation versus like sexual assault, I'd rather like focus on the big fish. 
Yeah. So, so that's something that, I, that I've, I've been poking at and pushing at for mm -hmm. a long time. Um, one thing that has happened recently <coughs> is that while we were talking with the university about potentially contracting with the university to have UCPD put in a sexual assault um, detective, mm -hmm. um, the county uh, sheriff's department decided to put in place a dedicated um, detective for the ID foot patrol through the county sheriff, mm -hmm. yeah. whose speciality um, and background was specifically in sexual assault cases. and. Um, who also speak Spanish, which is the other thing that we were always yeah. like, we, we want to have more Spanish-speaking officers. And so um, one thing that may be interesting to see is, is, is whether that makes any kind of difference. That just came in like a month and a half ago. Um, but that said, I, that was one of the reasons why I didn't want us to spend all of our money on the CSO program. I wanted us to like make sure that yeah. we had enough money to yeah. remember to try to go back and look at this again. I it's it's, it's, it's important. It's implemented. It's the, it's does it's implemented. anyone know yeah. how you feel about it? Or yeah. so does, I, we can go investigate, but that can be like an outcome well, we do yeah. is like go look at yeah. it. The designated yeah. person is well spoken of uh, by everyone I know. I don't do not know him personally. I think when it comes though to providing a process, that's something that we've been yeah. really striving for. And I don't just, and that this is something I don't want just a title. I don't want just a person because we can have a person. And then you know we were talking about policy versus practice. I need a practice in mm -hmm. like instilled mm -hmm. in our community of handling these things in a timely manner and making sure that it, uh, that the entire community feels like it's a safe place for them to go. Mm -hmm. So just because I don't know the officer, so I don't is know this that. what you want me to write? Yeah. Like. Should we try to, is this a potential we could work with them to develop, develop better, practices. better practices? And also make community members aware of it and make it them feel like it's a safe place to be able to go. Yeah. Two, two things really quickly. The first is that I think it's really worth it to try to make sure that people are satisfied with the new detective because yeah. um, it has been, according to the news press, or not the news press, but just the news media, this is one of our accomplishments. Um, if anyone has seen yeah. that, that uh, article about we're how we're getting we, credit. We for this. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're, we're getting Maybe credit. Maybe we brought the issue up. We brought the issue up. Yeah. We brought the issue up. Yeah, issue up. Yeah, 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 a couple of years from now, Bill will want us to pay for it too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, and, and so that sort of actually nicely goes into. Um, the other thing that I was going to bring up, which is a little more 30,000 feet, which is we need to think about what our role is going to be in determining sort of what the vision for law enforcement agencies in Nile Vista is going forward. Mm -hmm. Because I know we probably all heard certain things about what the sheriff um, may or might not think about his role in Isla Vista going forward and what we think is best for our residents in terms of how you know that plays out as well. I know Supervisor Hartman has. Um, we'll wrap it up with you. He has things. even suggested that um, you know the the law enforcement Isla Vista be turned into a contract with UCPD. Now, wh whether or not UCPD is re re ready or um, interested in doing that at all is another story. Um, but in terms of who has, if that were the case, and if you know law enforcement were turned into a contract in Isla Vista. Know who has the levers? Who ha pulls the strings on that on that contract? Is it us? Oh. Is it the county? And I think these are the things we need to think about long term. Long term, okay. John. Just um, uh, UCPD does not have the capacity to respond to a major mass fatality incident. That's the bull ball fact of the matter. They they just don't. They would not uh, by themselves have had the capacity to respond to 23 May 2000. But there is mutual aid. That's so how the part. You see, and that's what that's yeah. where it, you know. But you don't want to put something that 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 at the get go is depending on mutual aid. Mm -hmm. In other words, right. if you're if you're looking for independence, you're looking for control, and so forth and so forth. You want to have built some ability to stand alone. And a University PD is is just flat not ready yeah. for that. Yeah, during the last um, round of uh, sexual, um, like, say, like the Title IX sit-ins mm -hmm. and everything, I, went, I was talking to a number of people about the idea of the sexual assault detective, and one of the concerns they actually had is, is that, well, is it going to end up being UCPD, or maybe we can look at getting it to the end of the Sheriff's Department um, and yeah. for, for, for various organizational reasons or for actually concerns about things related to UCPD. Um, like, so I, I guess I, I, I would be concerned about the idea of essentially getting all shifted only to UCPD yeah. um, and, and yeah. losing the, those, those components from there. Uh, also, I've seen a number of reports, I'm sorry, a number of like document, like studies that have been done on sexual assault detectives and the kinds of, of interrogation mechanisms, that they, methods they end up using on the victims um, and why they end up doing it. 
And mm -hmm. there's and it's actually a possibility, like yeah. some of the people I talked to were like, you know, maybe you don't even really want a detective, maybe you want the liaison advocate position that had been discussed at various other points. Uh -huh. um, and so it's one, one thing to be interested in is to see whether or not this, de this detective ends up being like weirdly problematic at the victims, and then we almost have to put somebody yeah. in between the detective and the victim in order to make certain uh -huh. that the victim is advocated for. Yeah, I, I actually, so I, wait, wait, yeah, it's not, it's we're not. Yeah. way over time. Yeah, yeah. Um, is this... Is, it, is there anything that needs to come in here, or is this like what we've discussed? Can we include, um, just sort of piggybacking what off Jay just said, um, like in conversations about sexual assault and new law enforcement positions, including care? Yeah. I wanted to talk about mental health care with this. Uh, uh, that, that wouldn't fall under. Would, wouldn't see. fall under. I'm thinking that when it comes to like, yeah, having care at, like, the safety center and stuff. Like oh, yeah, that. so it's we didn't discuss the safety station's features. Yeah. Do you want to take two minutes to do that really quick? We don't have to add it in there, just as long as that's kind of... No, it's, it's, and it also can sort of fall under, like, uh, Father John has talked about, like, the crisis, crisis yeah. triage. That's yeah. what we were and, thinking, and so, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also wanted to talk about, like, the former plan of the sobering center as part of that, too. Yeah. If we yeah. could kind of maybe come back to that at some point. And I do like yeah, Father yeah. John's idea of it. Instead of being a uh, sobering center, I think it should be like a crisis, crisis center, center yeah. for uh, any kind of crisis. Oh, well, that's Jeremy and I've been talking about that. That's how I wanted to that. tie it in. Cool. That's good. Yeah, okay, okay, it's in there. It's in there. All right, next up is <laughs> parking. So <laughs> I two minutes. this is two minutes. We can <laughs> do more if you think, but it's up two to you. We'll start at two minutes and we'll see where we get. Drive right. to Brant. Yeah, so... Um, oh, wait, let me give you the service plan yes. um, update <laughs> oh, first. Sorry. So the service plan suggested a simple thing, which is we would pay for a study to be done about our parking situation, and then we would implement some sort of parking permit program that would cost almost $200,000 that would then be revenue neutral, that would give permits to residents and have certain restrictions on times. People can park in Elvis. I think it was... This is what Surfider really provided to us. You remember this, Jay, when they said maybe between two and four a.m. you could not park in Isla Vista, and then um, we, if you had a, unless you had a permit. So that's really that was the idea that's discussed throughout the AB three process. So two minutes. So don't, where are we don't thinking? go there. Don't, don't go. Don't go there. I I think two minutes is too long. So we are not ready to go. We are not <laughs> ready to address parking, and it will just muck us yeah. up so yeah. deeply. And we'll lose sight of this, these other things. It seems to me that parking is an issue. It's another one of these forty-year issues. I'm with George. And yeah. there's not an yeah. issue. Yeah, it's a yeah. That's a hard one. Is there a consensus to move on? Or I just don't think we have the funds to be able to handle it right now. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, for sure. Wait, but this is long-term planning, and this is yeah, something yeah, that we yeah. could fund with the utility user tax. Yeah, I think that thinking definitely beyond the tax, this yeah. is something that we should be yeah. looking about. Yeah. And I like the template basically that's put forward in the service plan, which is revenue neutral, which is enforcement during certain hours of the day. And I think that um, I understand there's like um, this perception that this is a very politically charged issue um, in our community, and I think that I would. You know, like I said, this isn't something we're going to take on now that I see us taking on now before the tax. But I do think that there is a lot of energy and willing to come to the table with funding for certain pieces of this, um, especially um, something like a comprehensive study. Um, I know that now I guess um, Boss Chef is going to give us a bunch of information that the county has collected about this, and we can sort of look that over. But you know, until we have a study, then everything we do or say is just conjecture and it'll mm -hmm. begin and end at that because we are not going to solve this problem by just sitting around a table yeah. and workshopping it. That's the first thing that we need. So we already gone now. through all of the studies from the county and there was a mass, massive community pushback as far as the studies from the county being fundamentally flawed and yeah, then some of us actually yeah, went back and redid all of the studies, like we started redoing those studies and then it was like, okay, well maybe we need to have a neutral party like us try to like go in and redo the studies. If we're going to do like a survey, I really recommend that we go talk to Transportation and Parking Services. I guess Batsheva didn't do that, yeah. but like if we, yeah, I don't think he like wants to do that. Right. No. Yeah. And, and that's getting in the weeds too, but yeah, I don't want to get in the weeds about yeah, like uh, who we decide to do this. One other thing, like, I think that maybe, I, this is a question, is can we look at the parking aspect of it in a different light and perhaps like maybe reward community members who choose not to bring their cars? I think that that maybe is wow, a way that we can approach like it that. here. That's and really we can good. actually yeah. exercise that service from the start 
without getting too into that dark spot. I'm actually, kind of that like is yeah. glorious. So yeah, that's actually one of the Thank best you. ideas I've heard of parking in IV. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Can I ask you, IV residents, is is there a shuttle running right now between IV and Camino Real yes. Marketplace? Yes, yeah. there is. It's Does a bus. It's bus number sixteen. Does anybody ride it? No. I mm -hmm. did Absolutely. when I didn't have yeah. a car. I it's still haven't butt. brought my car out it's here. It's still a pain in the butt, though, because if I get my Trader Joe's good, I can't, I can't buy ice cream because if the bus takes too yeah, long and melts, that's just the biggest part. Here, okay. I know, but it costs seven dollars at IB Market. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm going to say we need a okay. better transportation system to eliminate the need for parking. Yeah. Oh, for yes. a long-term perspective, it's worth noting that self-driving cars are actually like ludicrously coming into play now. And oh my god! Um, Wait, I've been talking. I talked to like Google about. Well, that. Let's keep this about discussion. Like yeah. 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 <laughs> but one thing that I was going to say about an overarching goal is allow residents who need their cars to be able to safely park near their homes. Great. I think I like that. I think that That's communicating with MTD work. though about being a little bit fat more on time is something that we could definitely talk about, and also the accessibility for disabled people within our community mm -hmm. to access the bus in a timely manner because we don't have overhangs at a lot of our bus stops, which means that if you want, don't have the ability to get out of, I don't know. There's a lot of it. It's not. It's not very accessible to disabled people within our community, and that's something that I think we should address. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Let's move on to Mac. So we'll, we already kind of talked about this, so we'll do like five minutes based on our discussion, but the service plan says that um, the CSD general manager will use 25% of their time to work and coordinate with the community at large, the Municipal Advisory Council. The MAC can save on meeting costs by meeting jointly with the CSD once per month, um, but there'll be some operational costs, and the idea back then was that there would be, the, the MAC would be a body that's like CSD plus other groups, so there would be a re at the regular CSD meeting once a month, there could be one board of directors only meeting, and then one board of directors plus the rest of the MAC meeting, and that's when you would do more of the MAC kind of business, and then the business meeting would be more of the district business. Um, and that was what was in the service plan, but we can talk about how we want to do that differently. But I, I still like that. Yeah. And this is a model called a, being a county town, where you kind of cobble together a city based upon having the powers of a municipal advisory council and the powers of a CSD mm -hmm. and the powers of an area planning commission. You cobble them together and it feels a little bit like a city, but you're still using the county for policing and you're still using the mm -hmm. county for... County town. I'm, I yeah, I remember we saw so that. I think you've got to be careful how we do a MAC and how what powers we give it, because when I look back and look at the PAC and the GMAC, which was 25 people in a room arguing <laughs> forever <laughs> about getting nothing done. We spent $3.6 million doing a master plan for the community and it was always a fight between the university and the county. It was and so until we got a hold of the redevelopment agency and just yeah. went and did something, which was yeah. Brooks Firestone, let's go do something. Yeah. Um, that big organization didn't, was, was kind of unwieldy. Can we yeah. talk about uh, that's an example of a MAC? Just because I'm, I don't know if I exactly all the way understand. Yeah, that, it. That's, that's, that's not. That kind of I can not. explain. It's what not an not exact. That it, it was the PAC and the GMAC, okay. yeah, which was sort of a planning. Okay. So let me explain what a MAC advisor. is. So, a MAC is when a county board of supervisors designates a body, whether it's a new one or an existing one, to be the official voice of an unincorporated community to the board of supervisors yeah. on issues that relate to that community, whether it's all issues or certain issues that the county de designates. So some MACs can only be for two issues that the community wants like, input on, and they'll have theoretically formal input in the county decision-making process on the issues the county does it, gave it. So it's really a county-based entity mm -hmm. that okay. we could be, but we would work with the county to tell them this is the kind of MAC we want. So my I question would be, does that mean that this is our opportunity for public participation within our government or is this an opportunity for us to speak to the board of supervisors it's kind you know of both I mean it's really I mean the yeah. main thing is for more participation in and having more representation in the county but it definitely opens up more room for people to be involved in the government but the original yeah. purpose was for communities to have more of a voice in the county and so that would mean that people who are on the CSD would want to be within the MAC to be able to communicate correct I mean, we were just talking about that IBC and when we wrote this, the opinion. idea was that we would want the elected officials of Isla Vista to be helping form the official opinion of IV to the county. I, um, and I, I, I want to make absolutely uh, embedded in anything we would say about this 
that if we are going to give a voice to Isla Vista, it bloody well ought to be principally the voice of those who reside within Isla Vista, not agree. merely those Sorry, who guys. do business or nonprofit business or all of those other fine things that we do appreciate but that um, the MAC should not principally be a body for the nonprofits that do nonprofit business here. All right, I'm going to defend them for well, a second. Yeah, yeah. They might not live here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted a, a question and then a statement. So the first is, um, oh, can you go over what some of the operational costs are that were embedded in the... They were, they were theoretical operational costs, like things you okay. might need, like paper, Maybe so a project to do. Uh, essentially, we could theoretically absorb a lot of these. Costs it would be technically free if we made the CSD a Mac. It would be technically free. So right. the second thing that I wanted to throw out there is, I think that it might be really beneficial for us to do this and do this. Um, let's get started on this very quickly because I think that if we um, can go reach out to a number of different stakeholders within the community that are going to be representative of the community, uh, designate <coughs> it so that there is participation in order, um, like from you know some of these uh, service providers in the community, but not necessarily decision making power. Yeah. I think that it it spells a really good opportunity for us to bring people together in a way that we have really failed to do thus far. Can I ask you a question on that? So would you be saying a model of where it's CSD board plus a property rep, a business rep, an X rep, a Y rep, or in like a five extra general yeah. spots? I'm, I'm not necessarily sure what exactly the spots look like in terms of designation from sort of demographic groups, but I think that the easy place to be able to start is from organizations that already exist, such as um, the Park District, such as um, Associated Students. Um, yeah, the, I mean, those are the two most obvious okay. ones. Jay and then Bob and then Natalie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, to, def to def I mean, defend the, I mean, there are people who might not live in IV, but they, they spend a lot of their time either oh, yeah, in yeah. or next yeah. to or constantly coordinating the people who are in Isla Vista. Yeah. Um, and the one thing, I also just like to, I mean, one of the reasons why we, we haven't gone as far down this path as we should have already is partly my fault. I was actually directed to go and communicate like, by the board in order to go and talk to people. I talked to the Isla Vista Community Network. I actually did that and then I got feedback from a bunch of people saying that we don't fully minutes. understand the MAC and so they wanted me to bring a more detailed report back which I needed to get back on the agenda and then missed an agenda and then I I dropped the ball. So <coughs> I'm sorry about that. And So, so but, I yeah. suggest that we do a little bit of research into other counties that have max because I heard from Dennis Bozanovich at the county who went up to Alameda County and he ran like three or four or five max up there he said it was really weird he goes most of them were not successful and they were you know a bureaucratic that they, yeah. they just didn't accomplish a lot well, do you know but if they maybe were like independent bodies or established governments well their max that were established within the county, so. But like they were a new, they were like a no, standalone. Map. Actually, I don't know. No, I don't just think. remember Dennis telling me when we were talking about. I talked to him about us doing a Mac, that he saw those as being, some of them not very successful. So maybe we need to go find the one that's successful and say, well, how would we structure a Mac to be successful? Ivy had a Mac, right? Yes. Natalie, what's that? My question. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Jay. If you have a response. Right. Ivy had a Mac and yeah. it was then defunded and, right. oh, and due that. to I read that. Um, and one of the big arguments about it was that there were that the county did not listen to them right. uh, from their side and the county side said that well they just weren't organized enough in order to actually bring us anything right. concrete and they only cared but, about city yeah. but that's means yeah. how do we organize it right and how do we yeah. give it powers the county give us powers to be successful right. Natalie well, Ben Spencer here's my question is that does it really stop the? Sorry, I'm sitting there. I'm just getting antsy. Will it stop the reciprocal relationship when it comes to Joan coming to our meetings and Gina really like you know I I don't know where because I know that we talked about like mm. but if we're always going to them does that mean they're gonna stop coming to us? I think it strengthens. It strengthens. It strengthens. Okay. It and then makes my other question would be: Could someone like Jonathan be on a Mac in order to speak? For the board, if the board's not directly on it, if yeah. the Mac, like if the Mac was another thing, the board could say I, they want me on the Mac, but I would, yeah. and, but I don't think so because the board might be funding the Mac, so uh, I would still okay. potentially okay. staff the Mac if it's yeah, a district. So thing. staffing the Mac mean that it costs money? that we're paying people to be on it? Let's say you're paying me. Part of the money you'd be paying me would go well, towards my time to staffing the Mac. Your passport, back pocket. 
Oh, Thank you, George. Che- that's my check. <laughs> like that, <laughs> Natalie, that's how we did it in the service <laughs> plan, is we said that part of the general manager's time would go towards supporting the MAC, whatever that meant, okay. and that they would cost a certain amount of money because part of their time is part of their money. Okay. So I just don't understand why we would have a MAC right now if we don't have something that the, go- that the county has wanted us to work on with that. Well, I, I think mean, we need to approach the county in such a way yeah. that it would no, work. Like that, they didn't that's say I think specifically, like, we want a Mac for this, uh, this, and this, you know, like, that's the way that they that's, yeah, that's, that's us to But we can say to them, we'd like a Mac for planning, that's a separate yeah. topic, but yeah. like a Mac for law enforcement, X, Y. Well, well that let's think, something that came up recently was safety events, and I love this Something that came up recently that Joan Hartman wanted us to work on was the idea of liquor licenses. I think there are a lot of things that, and I think that she especially has a desire to devolve the decision making power down to us. It's just that there has to be a structure where it makes sense for her to devolve the power to. So she's came and talked to like just me and Rodney individual. See, she like came and talked to like Jay mentioned IVCN at one point at the okay. stoplight. So if you, I think if you build it, then they will come. Is okay. what I'm saying. Yeah. And real quick, just to provide a one example before we move on as to a successful model of this working in other counties is um, one of the ones that's featured in our financial feasibility study, I think it was in oh, San yes. Luis Obispo or in Ventura, was um, before substantive decisions were presented to the Board of Supervisors that would affect the community, the department head or their designee had to go present to the Municipal Advisory Council and get feedback Ooh, before like it that. went mm-hmm. to the Board of Supervisors. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's really and cool. I think that's what we'd be yeah. looking Thank for you. here. Uh, and I think really cool. that's how you avoid you know things just stopping up and coming to a halt. Yeah. Because yeah. if if we just have to wait till the board of supervisors agenda comes out, look through it and say, oh, we're going to make a recommendation against this, well then that's right. how you know, right? Okay, so that. And if we're looking <coughs> about where in our enumerated powers the potential for a police collaborative board type thing fits, I think it's within a map. I oh, can see that. Well, I can see that. about the police collaborative. Okay, never mind. I'm just, okay. I'm just so okay. I will already just throw out there. Yeah, some, yeah. It's something okay. that's yeah. Hey, everybody, so let's, let's move on to I the next topic. But this, this was good. Is this accurate? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. Area Planning Commission, so similar to a map, let's give this one another five minutes and we'll see where we go. But let's try to keep it, let's keep it tight because we're 45 minutes left. We aren't going to get an area planning commission. The people from the planning department of the county actually well, came to our meeting. Let me, let, let, me, let me introduce the, the a service plan really quick. So, what the service plan said was that if we had a designated area planning commission, if we were designated the area planning commission by the county, like the CSD was, which is possible, and it would be like the county town model Jay mentioned, then we wouldn't really need to pay a lot of money to make it happen because um, they, we would only be paying for the staff time in the moment that they use it to come advise us, and we'd only pay for the meeting, essentially, that we needed them at. And they said that they probably would only need four meetings a year at the most. So it was estimated uh, 3000 per meeting, um, and then that's 12000 a year. That was the estimate. Of course, that's not might not be 100% reality, but the idea would be that the county makes us the area planning commission, and then the staff that would have already worked in Isla Vista development and advised the main planning commission would then just come to ours first. Are you saying this is the same? Area Planning Commission means the same as the Montecito Planning Commission? Very similar, similar, yeah. yeah. It would be interesting to see how much the Montecito Planning Commission costs, and it's a really powerful body. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Montecito got their planning Board commission by, assen- by essentially um, threatening to become a city and to, in fact, um, coordinate with the developer of one of the major <coughs> hotel projects to hold off on finishing the hotel project such that the, um, the transient occupancy tax that would go towards it would go to Montecito instead of the county. Uh, but, and in order to get the leverage for that. But Montecito was really concerned about not having their own city and they wanted their own planning commission right, to the control recent, development. Right. But the, no the, different out in Isla Vista. There's so much development going on out in here. But that we, it should be coordinated locally. I, while I agree with that, the, 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 the point that I was trying to make is that the, um, the, so the planning department actually had come to one of our AB3 meetings and Nyan2 laughed at us at our thought process of putting together the APC 
And essentially, there's a massive power dynamics issue between the county doing planning and us doing planning. And the only reason why anyone can come up with for why Montecito, and this was something that I've heard from multiple parties, including the planning people who came to our AB3 meeting in the public meeting, that Montecito simply had so much leverage that they were able to force the county to give them an APC. I think we have that leverage, too. Well, I, I don't think that's uh, Spencer, and then Yeah, I want to agree with the fact that I think we have leverage. But I also want to say that I think that um, if one of the things that I think had been discussed, um, I don't remember when it was, but it's the possibility that um, there's a the idea of the APC's functions being done by a municipal advisory council, so they were not just creating a bunch of new yeah. administrative bodies, because I think that the the main goal here is for high level vistas to be able to have uh, review and long term planning for development mm -hmm. and sort of a vision for what the community looks like from a development perspective. And if that can be accomplished through a, like one body instead of two, then I think that's beneficial to everybody. So would so that be accurate? Like the MAC, which is the CSD plus others, would be the body designated as the a APC and it wouldn't, meet, it wouldn't meet all the time, it only meet as needed? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, well, and whenever there was planning stuff yeah. that needed to come Estimate. up, it would get put on the MAC agenda and we would get planning staff in the room to yeah. make their recommendations. But that way. That's okay. I'm, I lost it. I mean, My there is no long-term community plan for the development of Isla Vista. Nope. And it's a total, the county spent $3.6 million and couldn't get it through the planning commission. And then the university went and did their <coughs> own study and it's completely, di di you know, not connected to the counties. They have a totally yeah. different vision. So that vision is not, you know, I went through this with the redevelopment agency. We just hoodwinked this development down here under the guise of the master plan to get yeah. some of these developments done. And not everybody agreed with what we did in redevelopment, but I come here today and walk across the street and go, we did the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. but if you have a, a uh, area planning commission connected to a MAC that concentrates on the planning of Isla Vista, it would yeah. have more um, focus, I think. And we got Pescadero lost because of redevelopment. Right. Yeah. We wouldn't have gotten right. it, the, the most socially significant development yeah. in the whole community. Yeah, right. And I think I think we're ready to move on on this okay. one. Yep. I think this one we haven't arrived at a clear conclusion, and I don't think we will in this meeting. Yeah. Other than the fact that uh, Mr. Residents need more participation mm -hmm. in planning, yeah. But uh, and even in the AB three process, we didn't come to a conclusion. We on did this, honestly. Yeah. So um, this is and don't one. take the county saying you don't need one because th yeah. that's just. Also, remember it's a policy decision by the board of supervisors, which has changed yeah. so much. New is going to change again in a year. Yeah. So yeah, 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 that's right. All right. Next up is lighting and sidewalks. So the reason I'm suggesting we give this one more than ten minutes, maybe like. 12 to 13 is because of the prevalence of the suggestions in our survey. And I, don't, I know that's not agendized, but I'll tell you that it is overwhelming um, how important, how, yeah. how much of a priority lighting and sidewalks is. So yeah. let me, well, I'll describe what's in the service plan. So in the service plan, we reduce the scope of this ability. And the ability is not really just lighting and sidewalks. The ability is all the powers of CSA 31, which are uh, gutters, street trees, lighting, and sidewalks. So all four of those are within this ability. Um, but traffic calming kind of devices too. No, 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 no. That's another. That's a yeah. power we don't have yeah. activated. Yeah. But basically, like, we would be able to contract that with the county. That's what CSA thirty one basically mm -hmm. is. It's contracting with the county to build these infrastructure projects, whether it's uh -huh. putting a tree in or putting a sidewalk in. Uh -huh. But uh, and that's what was in the service plan is that we would work with the county to determine what those needs are and what is in their plan and fund them as we thought the priorities were. So what do we think currently and what do we think hope to achieve in this? Well, I think that if we're looking at just sort of what our uh, fiscal situation is this year uh, with the $200,000 commitment, um, I think that uh, you know if, if this is something that the community is really interested in and they have a lot of suggestions for, then I think that we should get started fairly quickly looking, um, meeting with Public Works to see uh, what there is coming down the pipe that we could possibly, um, you know, get um, done quicker. And um, also just thinking of, you know, other, see if we could shape some of what their vision is, um, their long-term plans for 
infill of sidewalk and um, lighting in particular um, and just anything else um, also you know general beautification I'm sure you know the people are gonna have better ideas than I am sitting right here about just general beautification that has to do with street trees and sidewalks and gutters so can I, or can I ask if I'll, oh, go ahead. Well, go ahead, you first, John. No, I was going to say, so would you suggest then, like a next, next step to this idea would be for us to host a listening session for what residents, yes. like where we need to do this, and yeah. so we can then suggest to the county? Yeah, I think, I think we, we need, need a we need big map. Get. We need a big map and be able to mark it up. I think they got big maps yeah, already if marked up. If we're, if we're going to do that, we should bring the county first to have a, I agree. Give a presentation yeah. at the meeting to explain yeah. what they're going to do. Because if people always say, oh, I want this, this, and this. And the county's like, that's our plan. We're doing it right yeah. now. Well, yeah. uh, what I would say is that so. it's in their plan, but then we can pick based on people's suggestions. Well, sometimes they're like halfway through. through and I mean, like yeah, so yeah, of much course. of the lighting stuff that we were talking about during AB3, like a week after I, I collected that feedback, the county went in and put lights there. And it's like, wait, what happened? Well, it's it's pretty pretty that's why it is good to have that come in here and present yeah. to us, but we should also be able to focus based off of what we can do more quickly, because if this is money that we're going to be spending in this fiscal year, then I would hope that those projects, you know, we can do ones that will get done quickly in anticipation for us growing in the future. I think, though, that it has to be high impact. I don't want to be fixing a crack. You know, yeah, and then we, we go into the uh, election uh, going, yeah. oh, we fixed this crap, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was just a side note. No, that's, but, good. that's um, good. So uh, another couple of things that I don't know how they can be resolved, the, which uh, these are less, they're kind of complaints, but the sidewalks are really skinny. I've got to have those huge telephone poles in the middle of them mm -hmm. where you have to turn sideways to walk past them, and they're all over my street, and then I get yeah. a ticket <laughs> when the littlest part of my bumper hangs over into the sidewalk that doesn't really exist seven steps down there's no sidewalk <laughs> there so i'm getting a ticket for something uh, for being on the sidewalk and then there's no sidewalk it's like driving me out of my mind and i have like three pending tickets from it and oh, um if the sidewalk's only in front of your house you actually can get that one fixed well, Cameron figured that out. well it's just that like if there's going to be a sidewalk there needs to be a sidewalk if there's not going to be a yeah. sidewalk then tell everyone to get their dumpsters out of the middle of it and yeah. poles and everything else so, sorry, minor complaint, but it's just driving me absolutely up a wall. No worries. Oh, good. And I'm going to take a little bit of a different route from the comments that have come this far, and that is that right now the county and the university are each putting in, I believe, $200,000 per year um, for capital improvement projects in Isla Vista. And until we have our tax passed, I don't see us supplementing that level. There is something I think we can do, however, which is that we can we can provide a community coordination on certain things. Like, for example, when they do the sidewalks, um, they they take out all the trees, and um, I'm constantly people. There are people who keep coming up to me and is like, they took out more of the trees. What are you doing about the trees? And I'm like, I keep talking to people, public works, and trying to figure out. They keep putting trees in the parks because that's just like, well, uh, well, the parks are like our dumping ground for our trees, but. It's great to have trees in the parks, but we also want trees everywhere else. Me too. Yeah. And I so, agree with that. And, so and, and and I was talking with the with um, the, one of the the director of public works about the idea of if we, it, we can we talk to a business owner, get the business sorry not business owner, talk to a rent a property owner and get the property owner to agree to um, like put a tree in their in their yard if the county instead of paying to have IVRPD put a tree in pays to put a tree in their yard. Uh, and they were like, yeah, actually, that would, that would be okay with us. Like, we were happy to put the tree there instead of put the tree over there. And so we just need to, like, essentially talk to all these different property owners that have places where trees <laughs> could seemingly go, coordinate maps. I think that's something that we could actually do, and we could make it so that we get more trees and ideas. And are we purchasing the trees or no? It sounds like you're talking about coordination. The county right now. would be would be would be purchasing the trees. We pay and for so, them. And so, no, no. but I I, I think. No. Right. I, I think that that is us us um, supplementing the level of service provided for the for trees with CSA thirty one, and so we are not we are not acquiring, constructing, improving, or maintaining anything that was not given written consent for. I think it falls under our power perfectly. It would and That's allows us to, to do something that people just I it's so many people are unhappy about the about the trees all going away. Is there any way that we could do something? I know that this is probably not the best idea, but. Is there any way that we can do anything other than adding more cement to our community, just in general? Yeah, I'm not even for the sidewalks like in the first place. Permeable <laughs> paths. That's what I'm thinking. Like is there any paths? way that permeable, permeable, as in like, yeah. you know, creating less runoff, potentially oh, finding a greener yeah. option to do it, because we are one of those communities that's moving towards that? I think that if there is a way for us to find, I like that. Uh, as opposed to just adding more and more cement, we figure out a better way. There has to be a better way. Like, you know, 
If somebody came up with it already, I just have to Google it for long enough. Well, the, the county people. I, I think that yeah, I I really like that idea, and I, I think well, I that the specifics like aren't what we should no. No. delve no, no. down too far into right now. But I would say that I think that people in our community by and large very much appreciate when these sort of public works improvements are happening and that us being able to take ownership of things like that will do wonders in terms of us getting a foothold to sustain long term into the future. Yeah. And one of the things that we haven't necessarily talked about a whole lot is the impending um, sort of revenue measure that we are pursuing right now as a district and the idea that in order for that to get passed, you know, we're going to have to put our best foot forward and show the voters that we've been doing things. And people sort of have this idea of what their local government should be doing. And, you know, we pride ourselves in a lot of ways on doing things differently and, you know, being a model for the future. And that's a good thing. But at the same time, some things just people really care about and really want to see their local government doing. And I think this is one of them. So I, I don't want to take this off the table. I think it's something we should, like, be researching sooner rather than later. And you're saying that like we should s spend some of the remainder of our March one seventeen to March one eighteen two hundred thousand look, look into that. Yeah, because I will give you this context that the DP Salvador Trigo lighting project I think was a hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars for three streets from six five to six seven. Have mm -hmm. we considered also implementing greener measures into that as well by adding solar pit like you know the little solar panels at the top of the telephone poles so they mm. power themselves so it's pulling off the grid. And we don't yeah. necessarily have to do a lot. You know, the, the volume of what we do is something that is a specific and it's negotiable, just like the content of what we do, whether it's concrete or permeable passes. You yeah. know, we can we, can we, we, should, we should all go back and once we have access to FIN, we can go look at service area 31 and see what surplus is over there and see what they're doing with the money. I don't know where they do. They, they, have, they have surplus. Yeah. What? They, they do have a surplus. Have surplus. Yeah, surplus. Yeah, I, I figure they do. I thought it was all going back into maintenance. No. No, no they got money returned to it from redevelopment, AVP, so they start to get surplus. You know, you should watch but, my talk on it. But here's a long-term thought. Should yeah. we take over service area 31? So if, when we get staffed up. So I talked to CSA 31 about that, and CSA 31 was actually extremely confused as to why we weren't doing that. They, they looked at our, at our law that we put together, and they were like, I don't understand. So you're saying that now two different bodies are both able to buy things, but you have to ask us permission in order to do that? Why don't you just take us over? It's not like it will not be my job still. You're going to end up contracting back to me in order to do all this work anyway. It would just be much cleaner paperwork-wise. And due to the fact that they had the surplus, it also made sense. Um, I, I honestly am not certain why we didn't do that. We can just go to right. Lafco to still do that. Yeah. You can take over, it. you're saying? To, yeah. to subsume it into the CSD. I think it's just a... I think yeah. the county would like that. Maybe. Yeah. Too. Maybe, yeah, maybe, I think maybe or they're just thing, yeah. throwing out why they're not getting stuff done. I don't know. I don't know if they're they really mean to give up the authority for service area 31. Was, I did not talk to county supervisors about that. I talked to just the, the people who ran CSA 31. Yeah. Well, so I don't yeah. think county supervisors yeah. probably would agree with their staff for that one. Yeah, I think that's where it just depends on where the extra 200,000 is coming from. If they think they give that over to us and then they get out from the 200,000 that they're contributing, mm -hmm. maybe that's how they're looking at it. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know where that money's coming from. Anything else on lighting and sidewalks? Okay. Uh, we have one service left and we're almost done. I um, want to, oh. or here, you do that. You show the service plan and I just want to offer something that will maybe streamline this one a little bit. The graffiti abatement? Yeah. Yeah, so graffiti abatement in the service plan, all we said was we could help pay for what IVRPD's needs are. And we said we'd even pay for more than what the needs are. So their needs were like, 6,000 right at the point in 2015, but we said we'll give 10,000. Do not worry about going to get the money, like it'll come in for sure. Because the landlords actually it was 9,000 and they only had 6,000 in 2015 because the landlords stopped giving their 3,000. Um, wow, they were opposing the tax, it was great. And so we said that the CSD could give 10,000 to make, to make sure that the program always works. But the additional idea, which was not directly in the service plan, or it wasn't another part than this, which is to fund public art works that would mitigate future graffiti. I think that's lovely. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. this, is, this is obviously really different, but in uh, Toronto, they had a huge issue with K-12 
community graffiti and instead of uh, hiring muralists they thought it would be better if all the community members participated so they have this whole street that used to be graffiti and then every six months they repaint over it to do another community painting I like the idea of refreshing yeah. so if we could create create something that we would be able to refresh regularly yeah. uh, creating a like Venice Beach that's yeah. what you do like create yeah. a graffiti spot I think that's yeah. such a cool yeah. part of it to refresh it I, I, I like that I think giving concept. it new life every so yeah. often is cool yeah. that's refresh. I think that's a really awesome idea and I think that we might you know, I just want to throw out an idea of maybe the side <coughs> wall of the community center. I know it's still in renovation that's right yeah. now. I, I love it. Awesome. Wow. If we yeah. could get, because right now it's just all shrubbery and there's the tree over there. And if we could, you know, work out some deal with the county where we could get some of that stuff cleaned up and then in return, you know, we would contribute to. Historically, there have been some great murals there too. Well, there's, there's a whole ordinance on the books that they're going to have to put 2% of the fund for art in public places that they should. Yeah. Put it to this kind of I, so I don't know if it applies to, to that contract, but generally it mm -hmm. does. Yeah. yeah. And one of our like one of the discussions we had about placemaking, I think that this is a huge aspect of yeah. it. Yeah. And really yeah. making yeah. this is where the investment in the community happens is here, I think. Graffiti abatement is like the hotbed of that for me at least. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that immediate action that we can move towards taking is um, finding out what the park district's unfunded yeah. graffiti abatement is for this fiscal year and an estimate for the next mm -hmm. and make a request to the university very soon. I can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting with Rodney on Tuesday. That's so, so good. Okay. The graffiti abatement has always been a funding issue and it's such a small funding issue right. but it's such a big deal yeah, all the yeah. time. If we get the tax we should commit the graffiti abatement. Uh, yeah, but, but even beforehand yeah. I mean we can do it now. Or we yeah. can just yeah. 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 I think that with we can't disregard the idea of community art, though. I think the, no, two, I think that's right. the two should go hand in hand with that funding request. Yep. Yeah. So we're thinking the what you'd like me to start looking into to see what we can implement is a graffiti wall of some sort in Alavista, yes, like a no, designated graffiti. graffiti yeah. Well, okay. I I think it'd be broadened it to public art. To public, public art, but art, yeah. this would be one way. This is a I more. I think one way would be a graffiti yeah. area, and then one I want definitely want public art, and I want people to be able. I want everyone to be able to do it, and it needs to be a visible enough spot that people who are walking or riding their bikes by see. Yeah. So how how can I just ask a question? So. Graffiti wall is one way to have public art. What are other ways so we can like look into more specific means like um, well, murals, murals in murals different in the redevelopment agency? You know, we did all the facade improvements. So if you say a facade improvement could help remove graffiti by, you know, putting up timber or something, you know, I think for private change, property, you mean? Yeah, you know, well, it was public private partnership. We right. usually combine with the private entity, and we, you know where you would have a blank wall yeah. and you might put up a facade and yeah. people don't paint it that. Is That's it one of the cool things really up in Lompoc thing. where they've got all those historical uh, uh, murals that are there that really tell the story. And one of the things that we don't have here in Isla Vista is a sense of continuity. Um, I mean, there, there, there's a lot that's happened in this town and um, should be memorialized. We talked uh, yesterday like at our meeting actually about creating kind of like an IV museum oh. kind of yeah. thing. Oh, yes. And I yes. thought that would be such a really cool, not yeah. just as an exhibit, not yeah. temporarily on the third floor okay. of the library. Yeah. And you know? Jay's going to give us a two second rundown of what we never got accomplished yeah. or didn't get yeah, an answer response plan. to that. Um, I just really quick, I want to make sure, Bob, that I this is what you meant like facade improvements for private property with public funds, yeah, yeah. or, or oh. public private. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean by this. This okay. is a, a quick specific and could be more short term is that the county was planning on doing art on the signal box from the new stoplight, yeah, but perfect. still hasn't done that, so that might be a potential. Yeah, 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 that's perfect. Signal boxes, and we can do, we can do them for all. Great. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can you open your email and uh, the documentary? Just thing? remember, there, there. I IGF also email? brought. There's two percent. My personal email. Oh, it might have been your personal email. See, what did we learn today, Jay? Not personal <laughs> <okay>. emails. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, back in 2014, uh, when we started this process, I had kind of put together. I remember a, this. <laughs> yes, a list of scroll, scroll down a little bit. A list, a list of other things that, uh, or a just general list of things that we'd wanted to do, and the ways in which they fit into the various laws and options that we had. And one of the things that even back then uh, I, I had on this list was stop curbside composting. Um, and that also, on, like, on the next page, I've got rubbish abatement. 
Um, the, every, every one of these kind of general meetings that we end up having, somebody shows up and talks about trash issues. Trash, whether they're yeah, talking yeah, about trash is a good idea. Yeah, whether they're talking about broken bottles on the street, nope, whether I, they're I talking totally about agree. trash. Litter. Is, yeah, um, we should. You know, the only time you saw a county come here and talk on trash is when you threatened to take over the service from them. Yeah, and, and then since then they haven't shown back up. Yeah, and so. in fact, at that meeting, um, there was there was a letter from uh, um, from Matias talking about how the county was really proactive, working on composting issues. Well, I went to the first meeting of E-Coalition this year, and uh, the, near the school year, and at that meeting they were saying, and so the county promised that they were going to be proactive about these issues, and in fact mm -hmm. the county did nothing. So we're having to start over from scratch, and this time we're ignoring the county entirely. Um, the, the, the county has essentially two people who are at all involved in Isla Vista Trash. One person who is uh, kind of just in charge of, of, of paying attention to our contracts, doesn't really spend, have to do that much. And then the, uh, uh, um, a code enforcement officer. Um, the, they actually make money on trash. Um, there's a franchise fee which goes to the general fund. You can spend it on anything. Yeah, you, um, you gave us that. In order, it, uh, um, I just don't think it was right when you brought it. It's fine. Um, and so the... Um, and, so, and, and, and this is actually the reason why I brought it to, the, to that meeting was because actually Jeff Hodge from the San Diego Community Service District had said that yeah. a previous me, um, um, CSD that he had been a part of, they did the trash takeover. It was a really easy process. He would come and help advocate it for us with LAFCO. The lead that um, took over the trash, too. Yeah, and it's something that it's something that it just seems like it, there's a lot of interesting opportunities for us to do to do targeted local improvements on Maybe the, the trash. Maybe so the of public worms would want to take it. Oh, oh yeah. They, some of them were excited about Good question. Good question. So we've moved on to the new ideas yes. and new services. And under trash, curbside composting is a more immediate thing we could potentially do, which is what you said here is pay for the overhead to make it happen. Yeah, it's so actually, I, th that was back in 2014. I've got more, I was just kind of bringing this up to like show that like this okay. has been something that we've been talking about for a long time. Okay. Um, and then long term, do we like sense that long term, like way long term, we'd want to do something like Jay had one presented to us, which is the taking over the trash from the yeah. county is that the interest? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I, I think idea. it's a great idea. I really yeah. like that idea. All this but particular. Jay had a great course. idea. You bring that service local with people that live here. And yeah. yeah. This would be boards being directed by locals. You're going to get better. Yeah. Service. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. and, and, and be very clear, this is not because I know there was some confusion at that last at the at the meeting where it came up. This is not us hiring trucks and setting up trash mm -hmm. routes. This yeah. is only thing that changes is there's just an administrative contract mm -hmm. that currently yeah. is with Marburg that Marburg. we would be in charge of instead of them being yeah. instead of yeah. the county being in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's an easy and one. we would then have direct talk That's discussion. <laughs> like a simple example is people complain about all the broken bottles all the time. Well, why don't we have trash cans anywhere in IV that are not like behind our house? Yeah. Um, yeah. And in fact, we're taking the uh, on purpose. We're taking a lot of the large dumpsters and moving them behind houses. We should yeah. have nice, pretty trash cans around IV, and then yeah. people would actually yeah. throw their stuff away, and we wouldn't have the litter and broken bottle level. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say this: we did designate ten minutes, so I'll put like another eight minutes left for this like additional services piece. So let's we can keep going on this. Or yeah, I, had, I had a quick question, real quickly, which is that we've talked about a lot of things that we might be thinking about doing, but are we going to have a chance to prioritize some of these things today, or is that coming later? What do you think? Maybe it's a later. I Maybe think later. 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 I'll, I'll compile yeah. all of this yeah. in a better way and then bring it back to the board. Hopefully for November 28th. It is Thanksgiving, so I might not. I'm going to spend Tuesday and Monday. It's the next board meeting. Oh, my God. So maybe oh, at the December 12th really meeting, thought. we'll have a comprehensive okay. thing that we can discuss. And then the first meeting in January, we can <laughs> vote on it. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. So any other new ideas? The code enforcement is the... Power, it's like the power we kind of have but don't have yet. Um, what are we, is there any thoughts on that one? I think there's a, a desire by the county, maybe, that there's some improvement in code enforcement out here. <coughs> I, th I think from the county's perspective, I think maybe the board, and at least Joan and Gina, think there's lots of room for improvement of code enforcement in IV. I don't yeah. know what, what exactly there, they have There's nothing right now, except you opt into calling <coughs> the county, but there's no proactive code enforcement. One of the, one of the co core problems with code enforcement, which I was actually very happy and impressed that the county truly understood and when they came and talked to us about it, is that um, when you go and you just like randomly start doing code enforcement on people, people lose their houses because people get yeah. evicted from the now condemned yeah. building yeah. and um, they, they're no longer allowed to live in the garage that has been converted. And there's this yeah. massive like question of, 
to the extent to which it's better to do a lot of proactive code enforcement or it's better to like try to fix it at other levels. But right. So the other problem the county has is when they do code enforcement, they can't discriminate into an area like Iowa yeah. Vista, yeah. so they have to do it countywide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that just creates a whole different thing about coming yeah. into my neighborhood to do code enforcement, you know? I, that would yeah. raise mm -hmm. the ire of other people. Yeah. So the one of my thoughts is if we're allowed to do code enforcement, could we become the bad guys in Isla Vista that improves code enforcement through our agency as opposed to the county having to do it countywide? And I don't know the answer to that. You know, what could be interesting, and I think I heard about this in another, another community, I don't remember, but I'll look it up, is that you could use the money, the fines from the code enforcement, to pay for housing re relocation for people. But that's what another place did. I don't remember Can who it was. we do it on a reportable, a reported only basis too, as if like. I know. We say that again. As if like not a like we're gonna be knocking down doors, but let's say theoretically like my friend fell through his steps one day. Just his steps were rotten and he fell through them. Can we have it just based on if someone reports it to us, we follow that's through? That's, that's, that's supposedly that's, that's already the case. Not right? any better, anybody. Need better education about that. Okay, better okay. education. Yeah. yeah. Should we get well, like a like a presentation from the county on on that so that we just all have all the information to share with yeah, our constituents? Yeah, I don't know enough get about it. Get a presentation from the county on what's currently done and what we can do to better publicize the services, the phone number or whatever. It is. Yeah, that's definitely something within our purview, just not even within this power, but generally as a local government, it's providing information. So we can do that immediately if we figure out what we want to do. Yeah, right. I think that's great. Um, so anything else in code enforcement? I would say that the first, the third district office probably has to deal with this occasionally, and that's why they're, it's on their mind to do something about it. So I don't know if that goes directly to their office or what happens, but anyway, it's yeah. just that's something. Yeah, we'll yeah. bring them into that discussion whenever we do this. Yeah. All right. Any other um, additional um, services? So uh, I, I, I'm not certain what we can really really target with this. Maybe it's just like a cross cutting concern across a lot of other things. But we've occasionally brought up the idea of doing something related to food security and food justice. And we have a meeting about really that. And there's that. UCSB is running a meeting in a few weeks about this um, about relation to IV. And I, I, it'd be really awesome if we could do s something. But I don't I don't know what it is yet. About what food security? Food security better. issues. I, I mean, I really think yeah, is it's we leverage the things that we do do we do have so like things like the community room we can leverage that, yeah. and we can we can apply for grants as a lo local government. I mean, to mm -hmm. program the room to address food security. So while it's not like a direct power, remember Ross told us that programming the community room falls under the community facilities yeah. power. So yeah. whatever we choose to program that room with, could we could do. So it's, mm -hmm. well, as long as we think of what we want to do, we can then find money for it. That's funny. Go ahead. Oh, I was a, a little bit going to change the subject, so you have something. I was just going to say that I, I <laughs> like when we I like when we talk about um, sort of the issues uh, in a more holistic way, like talking about the issue rather than um, like just talking about the specific services, because I think we're very used to talking about the very specific services, and that when we talk about sort of an issue and then how to solve it, that it forces it to forces us to think more critically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not sort of just like sort of confine ourselves to the box, which I think we, I think that when we, because we are all involved in designing the community service district, that's sort of how we think intuitively now, service by service. But I was also gonna say another issue that we could do that potentially on is this idea of large events and um, mm -hmm. uh, how large events are gonna be um, policed, how the enforcement's gonna go, um, what sort of cultural programming there is going forward, um, what the, um, you know, ge generally like also just the idea of consumption of alcohol and how we promote that in a more responsible mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. I've got one other. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not saying we should build a shelter. Let's just say that right at the get-go. But um, every community, uh, if it's going to be a compassionate community, uh, has to somehow address the problem of the uh, least amongst those that are on the streets. Um, winter shelters are being cut all around town. There aren't enough beds and places in, in any of the communities right now. Um, what's going to be our role in that? 
Are we just going to encourage churches and nonprofits to step up to that? And are we at least going to encourage them? You know, on that note, to Father John, I think that something we need to address too is what the role of women who are also houseless with. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The closest um, shelter for women is all the way downtown. Yeah. yeah um, and that correct. means that, and also getting a, sh a shower in a yeah. safe and secure area for yeah. a, a woman is so important, yeah. and especially yeah. sanitary aspects yeah. of yeah. like, you yeah. know, being yeah. a woman, yeah. like all providing stuff. tampons yeah. and all yeah. that stuff yeah. is yeah. so essential. Yeah. And yeah. thinking about people who are on the, the street or less, um, who, who have had that experience, like I have, it's just a yeah. really yeah. weird and horrible situation to deal yeah. with, and Ivy has completely not really addressed it to yeah. its fullest extent, yeah. you know? So I think that there, we should definitely kind of hit on that. We do have the shower truck here once a week. Once there a are week a few, a few, a few things yeah. like that that are happening, but I, I, I guess what I'm saying is we ought to have some sort of a leadership role in that I agree. as mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. municipal body for this community here we ought to be taking a lead somehow. Are people still being dropped off in Isla Vista as a not really out of the jail car? No, oh, no, 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 not really. If, if anything, we're sending people elsewhere. Uh, you know, I, I've housed quite a few people downtown. Um, uh, anyway, the uh, people aren't being dropped off here. And is the population changing down uh, here? The, the population uh, has been Hovering kind of around the same number that it's been for decades. decades. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, despite the fact of the recent count. I think this might be a good thing for us yeah. to at least, you know, think about doing something quickly on just as the winter months are coming yeah. up. And I know yeah. that yeah. Um, deaths in the homeless community go up by a lot during the winter months. So. Yeah, yeah look at the wall in my office sometime if you want to yeah. get a picture of that. Yeah. The yeah. last thing I really want to hit on here, which doesn't have to do with any of our services, is the way that we brand ourselves to the community, yeah. which I don't think we really talked on, but that is the long-term plan, is unless people know about our long-term plan, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. And perception of our board is the reality of how it's yeah. gonna be portrayed yeah. within our community. Yeah. So I think that really making ourselves accessible is super important. Not just having a town hall to say we had a town hall is important, you know, like really making sure that we are yeah. branding ourselves to the community in a way that makes us representative of that, yeah. I think is something that we should keep in mind moving forward. And I don't think that we, sh we should be shy when it comes to social media, yeah. marketing yeah. ourselves over yeah. the internet, yeah. hanging things yeah. up in Starbucks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't want yeah. our agenda just to be hung up here because it's yeah. a law. I need yeah. it all over. Yeah. And also, translation services are such a priority for me, and I really want to hit that on there, is some getting translation services of our yeah. documents and our website priority. is a really big priority for yeah. me. Yeah. And so that's just where I kind of want to I'm excited now that we have Jonathan because that was something that was really difficult as board members for us to try to maintain a social media presence because of all sorts yeah. of ground mm -hmm. yeah. issues. But Jonathan's been able to actually start putting stuff together. Yeah, yeah we just uploaded a well album in our open yeah. house the other day. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. You I got tagged. Got tagged. You got the most likes on you and you and Jay's picture. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a good one. But wait, what I'll say, Natalie, though, is like these are good ideas, like our community engagement, and that's something that we had on the agenda. We don't have time to get to, but we can put that as an agenda item yeah. in the future to have a focused Let's discussion. See that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Right. Closing comments. No, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks. Good idea. It was a long time coming. Yeah. 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 I think Thank we still you. need a motion to. <laughs> you just came to my office minutes. a long time okay. ago. Here, here's our plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, if there's no more comments, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, motion that's my job. <laughs> so, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Made by Jordan, seconded by Grant, 650. That's a pass. Like no, uh, I know, I know. Is We're there any, the any board deliberation? I think right. we ought to deliberate for a moment. All in favor? Yeah. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So Thank ordered. Guys. Uh, we stand adjourned at 651 p.m. Director Thurlow, the only one absent. Honestly, feeling so much better right now.